Hey everyone, if you're watching this episode of the podcast on YouTube, just want to remind you that we stream live every Monday evening exclusively for first members on our website. If you'd like a 30-day free trial, just click the link below and get some more information. You're ruining my shot! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Rashid Podcast. This week brought to you by Battlefield One, Blue Apron, and... Brain tree. Big thank you to our sponsors and a uh, big thank you to my shitty segues that I hear about all the time. When I'm gone from the podcast, I'm back after three weeks. At least they're yeah, original. I'm, three weeks. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Blaine. I'm a- Not Barbara. Hey. And I'm Gus. I've been gone for a while. Why? I, I don't think I've missed three Wait, podcasts. When he showed up here, I was like, at, well, how long was your vacation? Like a month? Oh, you're in Korea? I was here three weeks ago. I was here on the third. It was the last time I was on the podcast. You got way too excited about that day. Because it, it lines up. It's like, oh, 21 days, three weeks. <laughs> Dude, one. we shoot the podcast on the same day every yeah, week. But of course I, it's going to be. It depends <laughs> when I left. I left oh, on the I see what you're yeah. <laughs> I think the last time, last <laughs> well, time you were the on the joke. podcast set. The last time I was on the podcast. Of course that's going to be It was still at 636. What's and dumb. Blaine was farting in my face. Oh, that was man. good times. Never how, lived that down. How was Korea? Korea was good. Um, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. Like uh, I got to do a, a lot of things. I spent two weeks there. And uh, the highlight, the thing I wanted to do the most while I was in Korea was definitely visit the DMZ. Right. And uh, there's like a number of DMZ tours you can do, but there's only one that allows you to get into the JSA, which is like those iconic blue buildings where you can walk across the border. <coughs> I don't know what the iconic blue buildings are. You're going to um, have to describe that. Can someone, if someone in the control room can look up like DMZ, JSA. It's, isn't there where they like meet up? to do any sort of... HSBC, right. OBGYN. Isn't that the one you were describing BBC. on an earlier podcast where they have someone outside the door ready to pull them back if they get grabbed? Right. Right? Right. That's the place. Um, okay. In, in the North Korean side in the 90s, they used to occasionally pull people into North Korea. So on the South Korean oh, side, they have a soldier there by the door. What is this? Do you like that Did ball you, opener? That that appeared when you were gone. Making sure yeah, that, uh, that no one gets pulled through the door. They oh, they, they've like, got a photo, I think. Did they attach like a bungee That's cord to That's the JSA. Which, so, which side of the, are we facing? So this is from oh, the south facing This is a photo north. from the North Korean side, dope. <laughs> they have cameras, Bernie. <laughs> they don't let any pictures out from North Korea. So, you make it seem, seem like nobody's ever well, seen North that's, Korea. That's actually an interesting point. So I was going to get to this later, but what you don't realize until you go there is that there are soldiers watching you the entire time, mm-hmm. and they will not let you, let you take a photo facing south. They won't. So that photo we just showed is like iconic. People who know the DMZ know that photo, but people who have seen that photo could probably not tell you what the building immediately behind that person who took the Kinda photo like the looks like. Kind like in Egypt. Right. But if you had a mirror, you could take I'm a mirror. photo. I'm, I'm lost here. So you can't take a photo into North Korea. Into South Korea. That's a big sign saying you no selfies. You can't take the picture south into North why, Korea. Why would that? Oh, because is it the, the South Koreans they don't want? They don't want North Korea to know what that building looks like. They don't want the North Koreans to have detailed information about that building. So but they don't know. You just you just go to the border and you just look at it. And you're like, oh, yeah. can't but they, the, the windows are mirrored, they so they can't see in. Okay, okay. What is it, a wall? Go back to the picture. Go back to the picture. Can we see? Can we pull that picture back up? So this is facing cardinal direction This is north. facing north. That is North Korea. That so if I'm standing building. in that white building, I can see whatever's behind the cameraman. Exactly. Right, but you don't know what's in the building. Well, who can, I, so what if I take a picture of it? I don't know what's what? in the building. So you're saying it's that picture was taken from indoors? That picture's taken from outdoors. You just can't turn around. You cannot take a picture of that building That's in the That's the only pictures that the North Koreans have, is that photo. I don't know. They don't it's want people to know. taking the photo north to show what the south side of the building looks like. What was like. that crap about That's a mirror? That's the thing they don't have a view of. The, the, mirror, the, the windows on the outside of the South Korean building are mirrored so that you can't take a... They can't see it. How fucking petty so do you So someone's have to be? taking that from in front of the mirror? What are you talking about a mirror for? No, it's a, it's a one-way mirror, though. They're looking away you can from look that in, building. But you, so you can look out, but you can't look in. So I'm already Does anyone so, else I'm not so know what the hell Do you hell understand, is? though? Know. You, Gus, you must understand why that's dumb, because you're saying we no, can't I get take it, a picture I get it. Of... That's the rule. There was a dude with his hand on a gun telling me not to take a photo so facing wait, south. They can't yeah. take so a picture of something. So I didn't take a photo facing south. That, that's, that makes sense, but his you should have questioned him and said, hey, so they can't put take the Yeah, I'm going to question the dude with a gun who's like, do not take that photo facing south. I mean... If whatever you, you, you want, man. You should have gotten north of him and be like, draw, and then taking a picture. And then, you know, she said, look, I'm half black, half Korean. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would have gotten great. <laughs> so even to get to that say point. Say you're an American. You, you go, have to answer your questions. No, God, no. <laughs> even to get to that point, I think we went through about five military checkpoints. And you have to submit your passport to the United Nations a week in advance to get there. And the United Nations has to approve you even being in that area. Just don't <laughs> make it a tourist spot. 
That's what that says. To no, me. no, it's, it's awesome. Much... That is, you don't do Fog of the World anymore, but that is oh. my most proud Fog yeah. of the World <laughs> achievement. That's pretty dope. Is I walk in Fog of the World, it shows me walking across the North Korean border. Really? Yeah. Well, like, but what way were you facing? Can't say. <laughs> That's a national security issue. Fog of the World doesn't work if you face south and you walk there. I, I just got I got my <laughs> iPhone 7, and I had my old iPhone for a long time, and I was like, all right, I got this thing transferred over, but I'm positive I missed something. My last transfer from the 5 to 6, that's when I lost my Fog of the World data. Sucks. And I could have gone back and, like, restored the phone, but I was like, fuck it. I'm glad to be rid of it. I almost had the exact same thing happen this time. I loaded up Pokemon after, like, two weeks of yeah. having my 7, and it was like, oh, here's Dr. Willow. Pick what person you want to be and everything. I'm like, what happened? To, where, where's all my Pokemon? And then Where's all my Pokemon? There we go. Do you I was, care? I don't. I didn't care at all. But then I realized later I was signed in on like some random Gmail account that I have Uh, and not on my primary account that I was using for it. And then all my Pokemon came back. Of the fall off of that game? I was going to say, is anyone still playing that? The trackers are back now. My kids started playing Pokemon on the DS because they played Pokemon on mobile. Good. They got them. They did. They got them in the ecosystem, dude. Now they're all like, you know. Now it sucks because you'll be like at dinner and you're like, put it away, put it away. You Mm. didn't have to do that with Pokemon Go. Right, you know, because there was nothing they could do. Yeah, they checked and that was it. They put it down. Yeah, I, I went to Dallas this weekend. We never had Chris. DSs in our house really before that. Now we do. Oh, really? I yeah. know. I know for a fact. Ashley had DSs in your house. Well, we did. Like it wasn't a thing. Like they were a thing for like a week. Now it's been like the last like two months. But DS was for a week. Well, there'd be something that came out like Animal Crossing, mm. and I'd be I'd play it for like half an hour and go, "Oh, I remember this fucking thing. Get out of here." Ashley would play it for a week straight, and now Nintendo have made a big, giant iPad thing with hooks on. No, oh, like the Switch thing? Sides on. Yeah. Oh, would you blame what were you saying about going to Dallas? Oh, I was going to say I went to Dallas with Chris uh, Damaris. Uh, we were at a, a film fest. I already and, the story. And uh, we were like at a bar, and he'd pull out his phone right now, and then he's like, I must be texting somebody on Tinder or something. I looked, he's still on Pokemon Go, like in the middle of a nightclub. No, he's not. Yeah, he was still playing Pokemon Go. Like, he, everywhere we went, he'd be like, eh, 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 <laughs> he just looked like the biggest child. <laughs> he's keeping it real, man. I, I did it because I was somewhere, I was like out and about, and it was in a location where I normally am not. And I was like, oh, it's like, I'm. I used to do that for Fog of the World. I used to bust it out, and then it became Pokemon Go. So I was like, oh, Pokemon Go. I haven't thought about it in a long time. And it was still like on my home screen list of icons. Yeah. Like, I haven't moved it into a folder. Anything. I need to get rid of it. Yeah, so I tried to load it. and it was like, so, But the trackers came back. Oh, that's that's the big bullshit. News. That's the big news today. It's like the trackers are coming back from Pokemon <laughs> that's Go. That's bullshit. That right. destroys the, the spirit of the game. Oh, you're, you're, you're a lunatic. Trackers are the fucking worst. I'm when they gl- got rid of the trackers, the that's trackers when everybody gone. stopped playing. You fucking killed Joel. Because everyone was done with the game by that point. It was coincidental that the trackers went away and people stopped playing. Not at People all. were done. Anyway, people will not come back because trackers are back. I think they waited too long. I know, to I agree with that, though. Do but stuff just... with Legendary Pokemon. They waited too long. Like now, even if they were like, there's a Mewtwo out and about right here. Mm. I don't think... Have they done that yet, though? I don't know. Because like I remember the commercial was like, oh, it's Times Square, you're a Mewtwo, and everybody's fighting together, and I never saw it happen. I was kind of bummed. You saw a commercial for Pokemon Go? Yeah, they, a long time ago when they were like announcing it. It was at some convention or something. I just or feel like they were, they were probably trying to spread all those out, and now but nobody I, gives a damn. They said it's a real thing. That was like They had like a trailer for it, all and right, everybody's out. Pokemon Go trailer, Find it. Find it. What am I, what am okay, I, I dare you. Fight what was me, a Blaine. trailer for it? Don't, yeah. fi- don't fight me. Thank you, Gavin. Um... So I, pu- I pulled up my Fog of the World screenshot to make Bernie jealous. I don't know if we can. Uh, oh, we can pull I will. This will make we, me jealous. Can we pull up uh, the? I'll take a look at it. I've um, actually never seen. I'm one. streaming my. I'll go into this knowing that I'm going to be jealous. My Fog of the World. They're not ready. All right, it's I'm gonna look screen. up. There it is. <laughs> That's right. Oh, so you cross the board. That's the red. Is across the, border. the board. The red is the border. The red is the DMZ. Ooh, you're fucking. Criminal. So how many how many Americans do you think have gone into North Korea? Like that, a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. Like numbers though. I have no idea. Thousands? Okay. There were 30 people yes. on my tour. Okay. And, uh, it's like a d- and they do them five days a week. Okay. G- Except there was, a, there was an unusual thing where um, they weren't sure. I was initially, they were not going to let me do this tour because there were joint uh, South Korea, U.S. military exercises going on at the, same t- at the mm-hmm. time I was there. And then like, they rescheduled some of the Cause they had training exercises. Coming. Yes. So that there was one day while I was there where I could potentially go. And the interesting thing was, um, sometimes I would be walking through Seoul, and I would hear, like, the loudest jet engine I've ever heard in my life. Mm. Be like, what the fuck is that? And when I would look up, and it would be like two F-18s, just like, hauling ass across the sky. Be like, oh right, I'm, um, I'm in an area where shit could go down. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy to like look up, hear that, look up, and be like, there are 
warplanes with missiles <laughs> right above me, and I can see them and I can hear them. Where shit goes down on a regular basis. Right, and they're just hauling ass going across the Did sky. Did you just look up and think, I chose to be here right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, made this it was choice. a conscious choice I made in my life. I, I heard that uh, there was like an earthquake there not too long. I think it was like a month ago or so. And apparently when it was going down, like some of the soldiers that were on the border were like, fucking, it's on. Like, we're being invaded right now. Like, yeah. the, the war is happening. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. terrifying. It's scary. Were you on pins and needles the, the whole time? The, uh, the, the, so we got led up there by, to the, when we were at the DMZ, we got led up there by uh, American troops. So when you, get, when you do this tour, it's like a 50-50 chance. You could get either led up by <laughs> South Korean troops or by American troops. Yeah. And we, got, we happened to get led up by American troops. And the, um, the guy like, who... What's up, bro? The guy who did the presentation, like he... Well, before, yeah. before they do a presentation, <laughs> they come on the bus and they take everyone's passports and they look at them. They make sure you're on the list. Then they look at you and they say... Do you intend to defect to North Korea, and do you have any explosives on you right now? Some dopey American. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. oh wait, no, no, God, no. Are you laughing at that? Yeah, I thought it was like, I thought, like, you'd be all I think it was like making making small talk, you know, just like kind of making a joke, like, oh no, no, God, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Dude, in the well, military making small talk. That's never happened ever. What was uh, his mannerism like when he, when he said it? Was he like straight? No, he was it? super serious, like super super straightforward. Mm. Um, and they are they're very proud of the fact that they're stationed there, and they say like he he said, you know, we are the only unit in the entire army who faces our enemy every day you know we stand ah. here our enemy stands right there yeah. and we look them in the eye every day and uh, I, for, I i'm gonna butcher it i forget what their what their uh unit slogan was but their slogan was something like in front of everyone else that's pretty cool really yeah and said so that they're you, you know, change you check out my fog of the world <laughs> <laughs> check out my fog of, and that's what i got out of it it's like hey i got a screenshot of us uh, i got like, to i got to walk off. across this this imaginary line where there's a dude with a gun over there <laughs> it's funny like that that imaginary line people can live and die because they stepped on an imaginary line yeah like, i if saw he, if the guy like on this side walked across the guys across there could kill him it was like east and west germany wasn't it you just but it's pissed about on the line. You get you shot. You know what I found out about East and West Germany just recently, and I found this out in a, in a today I learned on Reddit.com, is that I I envision it as Germany, and then a fucking wall down the middle of it, mm -hmm. and that's West Germany on the west side and East Germany on the east side. Apparently, the wall went all the way around West Germany, like it was an I, like it was like a oh, pocket like in the middle of Germany, yeah. yeah, and it was like West indicating the Western world, Germany, but that. I guess they had to fly out. Well, that was the only. I way. guess that's why they had the the Berlin airlifts, right? When they cut off the supply routes, uh -huh. and like the Americans had to fly bombers over and drop supplies onto them because they were they were landlocked and chocolate bars. Yeah, <laughs> chocolate bars. That seemed like it would be pretty easy to blockade when you're surrounding someone entirely. So was it a good trip? It was a good trip. Oh, I bought North Korean booze. See, I was gonna say, did they did they have like oh, a little? I forgot hut your gift. I, 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 I brought nobody a gift. Oh. Except Blaine. What the really? What, seriously? I brought Blaine a gift. I forgot it. It's at my house. It's okay. I, I brought. I came prepared for this situation. I got you a gift. Well, it was at the, the video conference. It's a shirt. It really sucks. It's from the faraway land of Dallas. <laughs> so that's for you. Thank you. I'll bring you your gift tomorrow. I forgot. Yeah, I got him like a, a, right a, a shirt from the event. Yeah, we were at the film fest. So What's I got him this gift. Did Before, you get me a gift? What's that? Did you get me one? <laughs> Before I went to uh, Korea, Blaine asked. If I could bring him back a North Korean flag. Yay. So I looked for one. Uh, and up, for some strange reason, they don't sell North Korean flags in South Korea. Yeah. I don't know why. But uh, I bought Blaine some North Korean money. And uh, that way he could buy his own North Korean flag. So I'm, I'm good and, to go whenever I, I go to I North forgot Korea. It at home. No, I actually, I think I said, uh, I was like, bring me back some No, you said a North Korean flag. Bring flag? me back some yeah. propaganda. Well, it's propaganda because the, there's that guy, there was like the frat guy that went in, the American frat guy that went in. He was going to steal a poster that had Kim Jong-un on it. And he yeah. got arrested, and he's there to this day. What a fucking idiot! And then he's always like doing press press conferences where he's reading stuff they've told him. He's not him to being him. tortured. And he's crying. He looks yeah. like he he's yeah. just gotten the shit beaten out of him. Strings on my hoodie are fucked up. You what dumb me, reason? You gotta tell to me when that happens, otherwise really the audience goes fucking ape shit. But What's that? Uh, if my strings are not matched on my hoodie, and like this string was like up here, back here. If you're listening to the audio podcast, thank you. You're a normal person. You OCD but, uh, weirdos. I, I bought some North Korean booze. So when you go to the DMZ, you can buy. North Korean liquor and they had a bunch of different bottles and <clears throat> I bought the one I thought would be easiest to bring back so that we could drink it here on the podcast S It didn't come back for reasons. I'll explain in a second, but they called it Wine and I'm gonna use air quotes here. Wow, and they called it mountain grape wine. Wow, so I bought this bottle of wine yeah. and I took it back to my hotel room and I was like, okay before I put this in my bag and before I take it back to the United States I'm gonna try it So it had a screw top um uh, 
lid on it. So I tried unscrewing it and the screw top was, so, that's it. The screw top was so weak that as I was trying to unscrew it, it like buckled and tore. Oh. Like it, it, it was not ready for that torsion The force. cap? Right. Wow. I was like, well, that's like weird. A, that's never happened to me. I'm sure it happens to Blade all the time. <laughs> uh, so it's like, okay, that's bizarre. Then I started pouring it, and Did I you realized me alone? that what? <laughs> What's my, you get them gifts? Yeah, we're good friends. Yeah, we're good friends. You know. So I started pouring Jeez. it. Have you been to his house yet? No. No. That yeah, was don't a pause. Unfortunately, it. why did he not. pause? I paused when he because that. unfortunately I know where he lives because I was accidentally going to a store that's past his house, and I was like, oh, it's, it's Gus. Oh God, Gus thinks I'm following him home. Anyways. I had no idea. <sighs> well, I now you do. Uh, so then I start pouring this wine into a glass and I it, it's it's pouring into the glass and instead of being red like wine it's just brown gross and I look at the bottle and I realize that there's sediment all on the, uh, the I bottom would, of the bottle I wouldn't have drank this if you wine. brought it back there's it no was way I would have drank leaves that leaves and sticks and dirt oh, so it's meant to be in there no god no oh so then I pick up the glass that I poured and it's I meant I, to be I, in earth I sniff it and it smells like Gasoline and dirt. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> might have been. It might have been. It was brown, like, like gasoline. You know that, so that, that kind just, of hue. They just sell fuel in wine bowls. And I was like, so I poured two glasses. Esther was in there. We, I poured two glasses. She had one. Why? I had one. <clears throat> and I was like, I'm not drinking that. Okay. I'm not drinking that. I'm absolutely not drinking that. She's like, Come on, you know, what are you gonna do? It's North Korean wine. When are you gonna have this chance? Like, no. There's, there's no way I'm drinking come that. On, it's poison. So Drink she, it. she like, when is it ever gonna come she up like, again? Put her finger in it and licked it. And she was like, yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> she was like, there's no way I should have done that. You need to take me to the hospital so right now. I, it, it smelled like gasoline so much, it, I felt uncomfortable trying to bring that back on the plane. Did you try to light it? No, no, no. I was no. going to say that. I'm not even taking yeah, a I would have splashed would've... a bit in the sink and lit I was it. convinced yeah. that there was, there was like some petroleum in it or something. I was like, I'm not taking that back. So explain to me, like, do they have a shop and is it run by like some little North Korean dude that's selling it's it to you? It's on or the south tra- side. So they traded it with the South Koreans. I don't know how they got it there. Okay. But th- they have uh, they have a few North Korean things you can buy. There. I have an explanation. Maybe. Some guy smuggled it up his ass, and then that's why it was so weird. I up think his they ass fucking they, I think it's sticks. just bullshit. They sell the tourists. Maybe I don't think they have. I, think I don't that's, think they have goods from North Korea. I think they're tracking for sale. It's this product Korea. of DPRK on it. So I can make that sticker. Give me five fucking minutes. It was, it was weird. DPRK. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. It's like yeah, uh, Obama just lifted. Oh, oops, sorry guys. Nice. Wow. Obama just lifted the uh, restrictions on. Um, and he was so oh, mad. What was it? Cuban Ooh. cigars? Cuban cigars. Cuban products. Yeah. Today. Cuban should, cigars and something else specifically. Cuban rum. That's what it is. Yeah. We should have had. I know Cuban rum was a thing. I want to try some Cuban rum. Well, now. all rum production used to be based out of Cuba. Yeah. And then after um, the rise of Castro and the communism there, it moved to Puerto Rico. So like, I didn't even know that Puerto Rico was the home of rum. Puerto Rico has a lot of rum production, but like the Bacardi factory and places like that used to be headquartered out of Cuba. Hmm. And I only know this because I lived in Puerto Rico. And then after all of that happened, they moved to Puerto Rico. All right. So there you go. Fair play. But I, I, I don't. I have tried a Cuban cigar once before in my life. They're not good. Really? They're like, they're. Does it get you a little bit high? They're just cigar? like really like intense. They're really intense. They're like a, like a high ammonia flavor, from what I recall. Did you did you feel like Colombo? No, I didn't. Did feel you, like President John Kennedy. Did you feel like the guy from Aliens? <laughs> Who's the guy from Aliens? Look into my eye. Yeah, the, what? You know, the sergeant. He's Sergeant Johnson from Halo's based off of the guy. Oh, from, right, right. I hear you oh, talking no. about Sarge from Aliens. <laughs> yeah. What was the guy's name in that? <coughs> Someone leaving with A? Might, they might just call him Sarge. Sarge? 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 Oh, yeah. Sergeant A. We used to, uh, when I grew up I on the border, even bother to look that one up. No, we, used to, uh, we used to smoke Cuban cigars all the time, because you, you get them in Mexico. Who's this? When I was growing up uh, on the border. Growing up smoking cigars. We used to smoke cigars and get drunk all the time when I was like 14. Yeah, we used to go down the, it's crazy to think about it now. Life. I used to yeah. cross the border into Mexico to go drink, because I could drink there legally before I was 21. And it's now if like one of my kids wanted to go to Mexico to get slap them, <laughs> I'd just be like, you're going to die. Holy shit, yeah. I was not much older yeah. than JD when I would walk across the bridge and go get drunk in Mexico. How fucking it's old is JD? Is he, what is he? He's 15 now. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was JD's age. Really? Wow. He's technically 14 and a half, but it'll be, it'll be 15 in March. And it's like, it's a countdown for me because it's, he's now five months away from being behind the wheel of a car. And Gavin will, will not be at that point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sabotage that car. 
Young man dies in a car accident. No. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's sorry Brandon. That's not you. funny at all. <laughs> Hilarious. I was just going to make it so it wouldn't turn on. I'm not going to, like, <laughs> take the brakes out. I don't think Teddy will have to learn how to drive. That's the thing. We were just... Uh, oh. Jordan and I were talking about that this weekend. We did a, a tour. JD will drive him around. No, because there'll be autonomous cars by then. <laughs> yeah. Tesla just announced that the new all their cars from this point on have all the hardware that they need to go to uh, full autonomy. They call it level five autonomous driving. They have a video of it, mm -hmm. like, and I would. It, it's just like they can't roll out the it software was, because of regulations or the lack of regulations. It was a weird video. It's a little weird video because it shows this autonomous car driving down the street, eh? parking itself. All set to the Rolling Stones paint it black. Yes. Why did they choose paint it black for Because it was just in Westworld and it's relevant. Yeah, it's what it was. It was just in Westworld though. He yeah. wants to what? see her face. Anybody watch Walking Dead? I won't spoil yeah, anything. Yes. Don't worry. Man, that was hard. It's like it's like it's someone it, it's like a writer from Game of Thrones is like, Yeah, you guys are pussies and they're like, Oh yeah? Well the whole series has been kind of rough. Ah, this episode was the roughest. I mean, that's the reason why people got so upset at the end of last season. What happened? Um, there's a character from the graphic novels. His name is Negan. And he's a very long running villain uh, in the graphic novel series, and he's really mean. He's like psychotic over the top. And at the end of last season, I am gonna talk a little bit about what happened last season. Uh, he, it was the introduction of Negan, and he has this bat, which is a, a bat wrapped in barbed wire called Lucille, and he pulls all the main cast, those survivors that we've been following for now seven seasons, uh, he gets them all, like, down on the ground kneeling, and he's got a bunch of men all around him, and then he, in the graphic novels, he, I'm not gonna say who, but he instantly kills, like, a very primary ca character in the graphic novels. Now, the graphic novels, a primary character is not what it is in the show because they switch those characters in and out. Like, they established that in season one of Walking Dead, the show, where there was a character in the graphic novel who was there for, through the equivalent of what would have been like five or six seasons of the show, and they killed him in the fourth episode. Yeah. So it was like clearly all bets were off at that point. And the Walking Dead um, Telltale games are the same way. They don't follow... You know, the same, it's like in the same world, but even when you have characters on screen, they don't follow the pathway of the source material. It's like an alternate universe, but with the same characters. So you never know what's going to happen. And uh, the best way I can explain it is that people who had read the graphic novels were very kind of upset about this Lucille moment being a cliffhanger because it was like a very sudden thing in the middle of the graphic novel, like in the middle of the issue, where this thing happened. And it was kind of like the equivalent of the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones, where People who had read the books were like this, you know? And then when it happened on TV and everybody freaked the fuck out about the Red Wedding, uh, then everyone was like, oh, and they were talking about it. It would be the equivalent of that if the Red Wedding was the last episode of the season and they showed somebody pull out a knife and go, I'm going to kill somebody. And then that's it, you know? <laughs> and then they went away. And people were like, what the fuck? That was such a better scene in the book. So the AMC, The Walking Dead, they had this, I think, huge responsibility coming back to like make this first episode like, they had to pay off that cliffhanger in a big way. But then it really just came down to who does he get. And the people who would have read the graphic novels were saying it's it's probably most definitely this one person. Other people had different theories. I was saying it could even be the main character, Rick, the guy that you see on all the posters. And uh, if they did, that would have been, you know, crazy. If, like, they go in and they kill the main character, it could have been nuts. Um, anyway, they tackled it. And I thought they handled it really, really well. They handled it on, like, a lot of different levels. I'm... Speaking as spoiler free as I can, a lot of different levels, and they did it really well. Really well. It was right. interesting because so, you came in, you were like, "Ah, oh, great episode, amazing." Jeff came in this morning, he's like, "Yeah, sucked. What was that? Terrible." Really? <laughs> I've read a lot of reviews, and I don't watch Walking Dead. I've watched, I watched the first season. I've never watched it beyond that. But I read a lot a, of people, a lot of reviews from people who said that they felt it was too forced and obvious because they felt that the writers gave them too long to think about the possibilities. And that in their mind, they kind of narrowed it down and knew what was going to happen. I absolutely predicted who, yeah. But it's like when you leave that cliffhanger for too long, people have a lot of time to mull it over and really think about what the potential outcomes are. You have to think of the reverse of that, though, the alternate side of that. If they killed off someone in the season finale, that's kind of like a downer to end the season on. So but it's, it's like a you... big moment. Yeah, but, I mean, do you want, like, a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth after last night's episode. So it's like, do you want them to walk away from a season 
like that? Or do you want them to walk away from the first episode of a new season? You know, like, it's like, well, I want to see what happens next. Or do you want to, like, piss off a bunch of people and it's like, all right, we'll be back in, like, half a year. Yeah. I think they did it right. I think the they last right. season they had a moment that actually pissed me off where I was, like, I was getting really worried about the show. Where Game of Thrones and Walking Dead are two shows where it can be a main character, mm. you know? And they'll be in the middle of something really important and then all of a sudden they're just dead. You know what I mean? That's that's part of those two shows that I really like because all bets are off. Like in Game of Thrones, if anybody could die, and I feel like in the next couple of seasons, we're gonna get really far down. Like I'm afraid like Brienne of Tarth is gonna die. Are you talking you about know? the uh, the fake out that they did last season? Yeah. So last season they had a guy who died, and then three episodes later they were like, "Oh no, here's how he didn't die." Yeah. It was like it was fucking. Well, anytime they don't show like a head coming off, you can just assume maybe this was dead. like they, they did. did. Though. They did. Yeah. That was crazy. It was his character, and it was like, he's definitely dead. You know what I mean? It was like, without question. I thought Stannis was going to come back. You didn't see him die. Stannis! No, see, like, in... You, you yeah. don't know. That's still left in that Game of Thrones ambiguity. It's just been a whole season. You didn't right, see yeah, Brienne, too. you have to take her word for it. She, I think once she referenced that, yeah. she killed him, but that was it. So now we're spoiling Game of Thrones. <laughs> there was, uh, there's this Oops. guy... Oh, that's, like, way into it. That was long ago. That's the last season. I actually, I need to watch... Never mind. I'm, so, I'm not caught up on it. Technology has advanced too far. Mm. Go ahead. The Go other on. day, you woke me up eh? while I was asleep on a plane. Now, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be able to happen. With your thumbs, you woke me up in the sky. Is he, like, doing this? Was he on the same flight? <laughs> that's or? exactly what it was. Me tapping. If you have, like, a little haptic thing going on in your pocket, that's, yeah. like, me going... Uh, 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 uh. I, I, was on, I was on Wi-Fi on the plane, and I, I fell asleep with my headphones in, and it went... This shouldn't be allowed. It's even this Nobody's is creepy, but I feel like this because this is actually the way I type is like that's creepier. Like I'm just I, like <laughs> I'm all over Gavin. Like hey, hey, hey. I had one of the most embarrassing experiences ever on a plane happen to me the other day. No, I can't. I, I, let's see if you I can think compare. He's, can top you. <laughs> you you can top me. Your story your story is worse, but nobody knew about it though. I was like, I could have gotten away with that. The rest of everyone my life. knew mine. Oh really? So I was asleep on the plane, like this. Head, head down for our audio listeners. Triple like, chin. Looking down, triple chin. And um, I guess I, I, I thought I would wake up when we hit 10,000 feet. It's when I normally wake up, but I didn't. And <laughs> what do you mean? Wait. Because <laughs> there's the ding, and then they make oh. the announcement. And uh, I thought you could just you just had an altimeter that was... So I out. slept through all of that. I had a few drinks at the airport, so that was probably it. So um, the I got woken up by the flight attendant. She came by, and she shook me on the shoulder. She's like, Mr. Sorolla, would you like the meal tonight? So my head was down. I looked up and I opened my mouth to answer, and an entire mouthful of drool just spilled <laughs> down my oh chin, my God. all over my chest. And I looked down, and my chest was cold because all this liquid, it was just everywhere. And I look at her and I go, I just drooled all over myself. <laughs> and I will have the beef. And then she walked on, and I was like, I need to change. I had to get my carry on out. Oh, and I had, to, really? that bad? I had to go to the bathroom and change because my, my chest was just. Covered you in saliva. So when you wake up every morning, do you swallow? No, normally it would have spilled by then, but I think it had just like accumulated. My mouth hadn't spilled any of it, and it was just <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, all over me, and um, it was it was mortifying. <laughs> I'm always worried about snoring on a plane. Gus yeah, it's like way worse. It was, that was it was absolutely terrible. But the worst was how cold it got and how quickly it was cold, just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like gargling while you're like in your own spit? Yeah, I, I, I probably, I probably could have. The you must have had so too. When you probably said it to her, you probably had like a big string. Did I you, probably did you did. pull it out because it was just like, like what I just, else are you gonna do about it? I just woke it up. Like my brain wasn't fully firing yet, and it was just, it was just the first thing that came to my mind. It was, it was it, drooled it, on the couch. <laughs> nice nah, beer. I spilled beer. Drew a little beer out. It's like it's dripping off the bottom of the. I was on a plane the other day and I did this number, uh, where I was like I was leaning up against the wall, like by the window, and I was trying to like settle in, and everything. And I went to go, I went to go like, <sighs> like that, but instead I went like this. I went, <laughs> <laughs> like, biggest loudest snort ever. But I was fully awake when I did it. I was just like kind of drifting. And I like was about to fall asleep, and I just made this huge snort. I, I, like, I flemmed on the plane once. <laughs> flemmed? I had like a bit of like clag in the throat. You know when you like you breathe in and you get like there's like a valve or something. It's like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Ugh. <clears throat> and it just went. Shot out. Yeah. This you know what I'm gonna say? Well, on the carpet. <laughs> that is one of the biggest culture shocks you can get 
when I not necessarily like in the UK, but when when you leave America and you go to other countries, you got to talk about China. The way that people deal with phlegm oh, is yeah. like way different everywhere else in the world. Like they don't give a shit like about that's not a problem for them. It's like equivalent like I've heard like that Americans when they blow their nose in public, they're like, "What are you doing? Don't do that." It's like it's really gross. It's like, "Oh, that's like that's what you do. You blow your nose. It's not a big deal." And for them, it's like for like a lot of a lot of other cultures, most other cultures, I would say, it's like just hacking away and spitting out I, gunk is like no big deal. I Be- saw tons of spitting in Korea. Yeah, did you? Tons yeah. of spitting. Being raised on a football field, I just like I do that nose <laughs> rocket thing where you hold down one nostril and you go. <laughs> I like to picture but how does that baby Blaine in a crib on a football field. Pretty much, though, that was my childhood. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like I, I can't stand that because it's like I'm okay with that. Yeah. Except for I had one bad experience where I was like, "What are you fucking doing?" When when Which somebody did that, you know, they, no, you know, it wasn't you. You know what? It was a friend of mine. He did it. He we were in the pool. Oh god! And he, like he like comes out from underwater and he goes bap like like out of his left nostril. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. For that, I'll cup. What was that? So that for that, get I'll, in my head. Yeah, I'll cup and squeeze and go, <laughs> and then I'll just flick it out. <laughs> oh come think, on! You would do it in your own hand. Get just the pool, then you immediately put it back yeah. in. And, there you go. <laughs> I think to this day, Animal. I think sp- was my friend. spitting in public in San Antonio is illegal because uh, it used to spread tuberculosis. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, I, I love those uh, hearing about those laws. Well, it still, it still would, yeah. but, but it's not, not a lot of it around. Let me uh, read this here. So I want to know if you want to play Gavin or Gaggle. Somebody sent me a thing this weekend mm-hmm. where they did Ramsey or Reddit with Gordon Ramsey. What? Somebody, some Son news, of a bitch. some news person was interviewing. Did Reddit or Ramsey? Interesting. Where they had stuff from Reddit or stuff that Gordon Ramsey had said. When are we doing? And they, and they were asking Gordon Ramsey, and he had to guess which one was him. We're, we're fucking suing. Them. When are we doing Bernie or Bing? Fucking sue. Him. Yeah, we'll get right on that. Um, one reminder: this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Battlefield One. Just want to remind everyone that uh, Battlefield One was just released this past Friday, October twenty first. Uh, super cool game. I've been out of town, haven't had a chance to play it yet. It's, it's number one on my list game. to get into. Um, I'm super excited about this rejuvenation. I feel like we've seen so many World War II games. Excited to finally get in and play a World War One game. And in fact, uh, you just shot something Battlefield related the other day. I did. I went out to the the desert. Can you talk about in it? In Nevada. We talked a little bit about it. Why hasn't come out yet? I've we can it. tease it. Yeah. It's, it's coming soon. It was uh, it was bullets. Yeah, it was bullets. It was a desert. It and was, uh, it was tough to shoot because it was real bullets. You'll, it, it was uh yeah, it was safety wise. It was tough. Actual shooting wise. Piece of piss. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta squeeze. I just bought a really long That's lens. It. You had uh, an eight hundred millimeter lens. Yeah, yeah, that was, crazy. That was cool. That was a cool. It squeeze. looked like one of those things you drink out of it, like medieval knights, like one of those big long yard beers. So, so that was ba- one. Battlefield, was... Battlefield One. I just want to say it's real fast. Is available now for purchase and download. So uh, make sure you check it out, and you can check out the link in the description at battlefield.com. Absolutely, pick up this game. Uh, I think it's gonna be one of the the biggest games of this holiday season. Not to bring it back to me. But great to game, bring... great franchise, great iteration of the franchise. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. Bum, 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 That's bum, not even close. You did the McDonald's theme. I no, I didn't. Dun 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 dun. That's how that goes. Dun, dun, what did dun, I do? Dun 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 Apparently the Italian guy in like the third mission or something like that looks a lot like me and I've gotten like I think ten tweets about like, hey, you're in you're in World War One. Oh, someone tweeted saying you look like someone else? Oh, I feel so yeah. sorry. Yeah, that must be really weird to have that happen. How do you put up with it? Um, just want to say a story. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting to the point <laughs> where if, if, if anybody else sends me one of those fucking photos, I'm gonna like shave a stripe down the middle of my head so no one will ever fucking send me a thing that I look like so and so. So I get it for you all the time too, Gavin. Never looks like you ever. I, I love when people. I'm, I, I'm gonna regret saying this. <laughs> I love when people send me that one guy that's covered in hair over his entire body oh, and yeah. say it looks like me. I, I get that a hundred times. Sasquatch. A day. Thank you. The one. Um, the one that was good though was the one. Where Jack got sent a picture and Jack wasn't sure if it was him or not. That's crazy. That's good. Um, so y- you were talking about we were talking about planes and it made me think about this. On the way back, when I was flying from Seoul to San Francisco. First uh, class? Business? No, this was economy. economy. I can't believe I just scoffed. This was economy. Uh, I got seated next to this dude. He was in the middle seat. I was in the aisle. I got seated next to this dude in the middle seat who was a very nervous flyer. No, I love it. And it's been a long time since I've had to sit next to a nervous flyer. And this was a turbulent flight. For whatever reason, it was rough. It was shaky the whole time. Not like fucking love it. Any one you particular don't. outburst of turbulence, just consistent turbulence for 12 hours. And so we'd be there and he was watching Star Trek Beyond on his little <laughs> 
in flight. It's been like watching it in D-Box. Screen. And any time the seat would start shaking, he would pause it, bring up the map, try to look out the window. It was night. You can't see anything out the window. We're over the Pacific. There's nothing. So he's he tries to look out the window, and then he starts looking around like this. What's he looking for? What's he looking for? Yeah. Water. I don't know. It's like he's he wants to make eye contact looking with at the map, flight attendant. looking out the window at nothing, and then looking around the well, cabin people, at nothing. People know they're helpless on a plane. They just don't want to feel helpless. So if he's like sorting his stuff out, like trying to think of what he's going to do when the plane goes down, he's, he's occupying so his mind. He was so nervous, and he kept looking at his map that I was like, all right, I'm going to do this guy a favor. I brought up the map on my display. Like, I'm trying to sleep. He's moving around so much. Like, the turbulence I can sleep through, but him looking around, I can't sleep through. It's too random. Right. So I, I pull up the map, and I'm like, there. He can look at the map on my screen. That way he can, like, watch his movie and every now and then glance over. But it's shielded, though, and so that you can't see the person. This one wasn't. Oh, okay. Um, it's Korean. Still. Every time, like, every, I could see every now and then, he would look at my map, and then he would pull up his map. Like, just to make it's, sure? It's the same info. He's nervous. It's he, the like, same he info. He wanted to cross-reference them. Right, he would like look, and then look, and then look around. You should have just pulled up a picture of a plane on fire. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I don't know what this guy wants. Theory. I, he might have needed to take a shit, and he was like, how much further do we have? We were in the exit row. He could have just I? stood straight up right. and walked forward. Yeah. How come that guy ends up in the exit row? That's like, no, no idea. prize real estate. This no idea. A, can't be a nervous flyer and be a frequent flyer. It was, it was. Yeah, you can. It well, was an empty seat. Why? That's right before the flight. Turbulence is terrifying. Turbulence especially is not terrifying. If, especially if you're asleep. But it you wasn't get... really bad. It was just like. Dum, 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 you don't dum. want that. You don't. You want a nice smooth ride. You, of course you want that, but it wasn't bad. You could. Sl I, I could have slept through that. So, I could have drooled all over myself. <laughs> if you if you could choose, would you rather have turbulence than a smooth flight? I might. You trick. are full of rubbish. I might. I like you're turbulence. You're a trash man. <laughs> no, I like. It's like it's something to do. It's not. I mean, you don't do turbulence. You always say this. You don't do it. I know. You're just like, hey, it's a no. kid bouncing around. I like it. I'm not having it. No. See, I always think about it when I'm going down the runway. It's like this is bumpier than any turbulence we're ever gonna experience, and I'm like freaking out because mm -hmm. the runway's bumpy. This is a new thing that's been happening lately. When I land in planes, I feel like they keep making corrections. Like. Way more seriously than I've ever noticed before. Oh, the, well, like, right, like they'll That's land the... and then it's like a jog left, jog right. Like it's like, and I can feel it to like where I'm shifting in the seat. I'm like, holy cow! Well, Just they need to land the, straight, the nose dickhead. down, don't they? No, I get you. Like if you land in crosswind, you land and then you got a point forward and go so down. Like, I guess I'm flying in a lot of crosswinds these days, is what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I, I don't remember that previously. I love those shots of uh, I'm not sure which airport, but fucking planes and coming they're coming in like, in like <laughs> Birmingham. Oh, is it yep. Birmingham, so Alabama? Good. No, in the UK. Okay. Birmingham. So they come in like Birmingham. this. That's where the Brummies live. Yeah. Or it's like the, the airport at St. Bart's, which is like ocean, little bitty runway, mountain. And so people think you're supposed to land towards the mountain. Your inclination is to do that, but then you fucking smash and hit the mountain. <laughs> but then the, you're supposed to come down the mountain, Pick down this hill. the speed in the world. <laughs> yeah. Then like pull up last minute, land, and then stop before you go into the fucking ocean. Oh. And if you go look it up, it's like... The first the thumbnail for the videos there are just like planes like in the water <laughs> with the tail sticking up. They look photoshopped. Yeah. But no, they're absolutely not. Which fucking genius so, decided to build an airport so there? there oh, I don't know. I mean, I think it was necessity. Mm -hmm. He posted his frequent flyer miles today yeah. on Twitter. Did you see that? I saw it. Gavin did yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have yours? Yeah. I have mine. I'm just going to want to compare here. So that's that's me. Oh, nice. You hit exact plot. Yeah, so I'm at like 116,000 miles. So I was I actually thought it was pretty weird that I have 116,000 miles, but you have way more than me. You have like 150, but you only have 10 more segments than I do, that which is only five I've done trips. More international flights. Yeah, longer, longer legs. Yeah, like your average. I did an average on yours. This is Gavin. Gavin. Gavin has 151,000 miles this year, and 73 segments. I call it a triple platinum. So cool. did you you qualified I'm, for I'm, segments? I'm trying to pull mine up, and the airline website does not recognize my device. <laughs> Why not? Have you ever booked? Who fucking knows? What if it doesn't recognize your device? Who cares? What happened with this okay, year? Like, security this question. year for God everyone is the year of travel. I don't know what happened. I, I was going to travel way less. Me too. And I didn't come. I went. I feel like I went everywhere last year. I went to France. I went to yeah. England a bunch. France. I didn't come Australia. close to executive platinum. I was yeah. like in the 70s, 80s or something. Yeah. I have, I have another 20,000 ahead of me before the year's over. So far no with more probably coming. You're at 80? I'm at 85. You want to see the greatest thing ever? You want to show the other thing that I that I sent to you guys? This is what's currently in 
my Airlines app right now, this is the image I look at every time I load it. Do you guys have that one? They're loading a YouTube video. <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> it's another image. It's in the thing that I sent you. It's in the first the email that I sent you guys. Do you know? So to I control have, it. Wait, how many, I have, how many miles you got? Oh, there it is. No, no, that's not it. No, that's, that's not, not it. it. <laughs> yeah, when I, when, I lo when I load up my thing. That's it. That's, so that's that. what I'm I, happy to see every I time. I had a really, <laughs> while, while they look for it, I'll vamp. I had a, a, an experience I've never here. had happen to me before the other day at the airport. I was flying from Newark to Austin. And I've talked to you about this before, how in Newark, you don't have to talk to anybody. You sit down at an iPad, you scan your boarding pass. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's great. you can like order your food or your drinks or whatever. Hell yeah. So there was like, uh, there was like this dumpling restaurant in the Newark airport. I was like, awesome, I'm going to eat some fucking dumplings when we get on that plane. So I sit down at this restaurant, scan my boarding pass, and it's like, hello, Mr. Sorolla, we see your free flyer, here's your <laughs> flight information. What do you want? It's like, all right, I want... Nice job. Go yeah, on. Awesome. I, I want... <laughs> How many people I want made it? pork dumplings, I want soup dumplings, and I want a double gin and tonic. It's like, great. And it's like, I go to checkout, and there's like little credit card swiper there, and it's like, checkout. Then it like spins, and it's like, thank you for being a loyal United customer. Uh, as a thank you for your continued loyalty, uh, United Airlines is paying for your meal. Oh. What so the hell? Really? I was like, oh, that's cool. So then I was like, well, we'll see. Maybe it's just a malfunction or something. Then like the food, my, my drink and my first dish comes out. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Comes out how? Yeah, I was going to say. Conveyor belt? Waitresses. Oh, waitresses. Or a waiter. Wait Robots? Staff. Meat, so meat in this bags. case, it was a waitress. She comes meat by. Bags. She brings <laughs> me my stuff. Bring, bring him his food. And then this like uniformed United employee comes by and it's like, Mr. Sorolla? He's like, yes. He's like, oh, and he hands me a card. He's like, just want to let you know. United Airlines appreciates your business. Uh, we're paying for your meal uh, and everything on your check tonight, including gratuity. Uh, so thank you for flying United. Uh, we really appreciate you That's a nice being loyal to us. It's like awesome. Like it doesn't cost them much, but it's nice. That's gonna be something you remember. Yeah, I was like, oh, thank you. Why That's don't you tell United to go? I, get I, I, I was glad that I ordered the double gin and tonic, <laughs> not the single. I was like, yeah. Tell him to give Zach Anner his phone back. I think they've they've held his phone hostage for like a month. Why? How? Why? Apparently, he left it on a plane, and then they like confirmed it. They're like, yeah, we have your phone. They con they called his mom with his phone. And then now they're like, no, we, we never had your phone. Uh, oh. I had that with a server that I sent one time. Why can't they give him his phone back? Because they lost it. That's the, that's the short end of that story. Is it can they not, lost his fucking phone? Can him and stop yanking him around? I yeah. Don't know. I don't know. He's on like Twitter talking about that. I just like, I, just, I don't want to hear about other people's customer service problems on Twitter. But he's so sweet. It's Zach. I get it. I get it. It's Zach. I get it. You I've, know? I've still, there it is. That is what there, I see oh. every time <laughs> I load... My American Airlines app right now, it has, I have, they're listed, you have zero upcoming trips. Are you gonna, I have no travel booked. Are you going to go to the end of the year without traveling? I don't want to say yes or no to that because I will jinx myself. You know you are in complete control of your travel. I might be. I, I let, there's this thing that came up and they needed people to do it. And Ashley was one of the people who can do it. They were trying to find a second person to go. And she goes, you should go, you should go. Because it's a trip to a thing in Japan. And I'm like... I'll, I'll go. Okay. So hope. So we'll see. We might not have the trip. Might not come together. You're gonna go to Japan twice in the same year. Yeah. Listen, I'll take the bullet for you. I'll go to Japan with Ashley. You should go to Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Would you let him go with Ashley? Would I let Blaine what go the with fuck Ashley am I to Japan? Do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, Mom, please take me here. <laughs> what was that? Mom. What? I'd treat. It. I'd make Ashley like. Did she know. raise you on the football field? <laughs> yeah. Back Did in you the day. What? So wait, you said you wouldn't try it on, and she's old. What does that mean? Yeah, that sounds like it, that sounds. Try like... it on. No, it's Ashley Jenkins you're talking about there. Have some respect. Try it. But on. that's what we're talking about. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, she's the think, fiance of my I boss. Think, I think uh, I think Blaze is protesting a little bit too much here. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know what you're was, talking about. I wasn't nervous before. Yeah. Now I'm a little nervous. I feel like it's a little weird. Do you know? Wait, how many miles have you flown now then? One. It's okay, I just go hang out in San Francisco for a weekend, right? Oh. Stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Put your fist down. <laughs> so. <laughs> Milano would never. <laughs> Last week, I was, thinking, I was thinking about it. She actually really does like Bernie, though. He's a catch. I was in uh, New York, as I just said, over the, the end of last week. And within a seven day period, I had been in Seoul, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Austin, and New York. Fuck that noise. Yeah. In seven days. That was fuck. It was the most brutal jet lag of my life. My, mine was, I had, uh, when I went to the, the Homestar Runner event, I don't know if I said this when I did it, but I was in L.A., then in Austin. So, so forget about Austin. So I was in L.A., I ended up in Atlanta, then I went to Seattle, and then I went to New York. So I was like in all four corners 
of the U.S. in a, like a six day period. I was like, I've never, definitely have never done that before. And I'm just like, it's just too fucking much. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to be bad for you. And no one can relate to it either. I actually got to the no, point where... No, no, because travel's fun. I did... Always fun. I got to the point where I did, I, I did a four-day shoot in Indiana. Then I went straight to Vegas to do the Battlefield thing. No, no breaks. I got home and I slept for like 15 hours, which is like double sleep for me. But I got to the point where I was at the airport and I uh, went up to the desk and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. Here's my passport. Tell me where I'm going. And they were like, yo, you're going through Phoenix back to wherever. I was like, okay, thanks. That's because you get I those extra segments. What? That's how you get those extra segments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just couldn't pull. I'd been just always in an airport for like four days. I was like, you're going to have to tell me where I'm going because I have no idea. I had an experience uh, this year that I've never had before, which is I woke up in a hotel room and I'm like, I don't know where I am. Like, I literally didn't know where I was in the world. And it sounds so And it lasted ridiculous. way too long. It lasted like 30 seconds. I'm like, I'm in... Where am I? But Where don't you find I? that an unpleasant feeling? I did, yeah. It's I do like, find that unpleasant. I just feel so uneasy. It's and listen, I know a lot of people when they hear us talking about because we travel a lot, there's a lot of people that never get to travel. Josh Ornealis, they just recently took a trip uh, up to Microsoft in Seattle. They were visiting 343 uh, to talk about some upcoming Red versus Blue stuff. I think maybe they got to see some stuff that has to do with some Halo stuff. Um, Halo and he 8. tweeted when he went up there, He was, it was the first time he's ever been on a plane. Whoa. I saw that, yeah. And I think he's two, he said he was 25. I asked him, I said, how old are you when you took that flight? Which was like a week ago. I said, how old are you now? And he said, I'm 25. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's nuts to me. That seems quite common for Americans, actually. I actually flew a lot when I was younger. And then I think I went through like a 10-year period where I didn't fly at all. Between like 15 and 25. I just never flew anywhere. Because I wasn't going to see extended family. And it was like I wasn't yet traveling for work. And then I started traveling for work. And I was like, I was on a plane. I was like really nervous. And like everything felt weird to me. And I'm like... Why am I nervous being on a plane? I've been on lots of planes. It's like, oh, but I haven't been on one in 10 years. It was like such a weird feeling. I went where I went to school, we drove back and forth. I went to UT, so we'd make that trip to Houston and UT, you know, every other weekend. It was only two hours by car, so never, never I've flew. I've never had a year of my life where I didn't fly. Ne ever? Even was a, like a wee baby? Wee baby went a to Italy. A wee little Gavin? I went to Italy before I was one. Little Did Gavin? You really? Yeah. Saw my family. Made a Skype commercial. Were you a good flyer as a kid? Uh, I don't know. It was when flying was weird, so I don't know. But here's something what I think people can relate to. I was flying weird. Like it was all different. It was like the past version of flying. Like where pre... like people can just come to the gate and you can smoke on flights or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Like yeah. pre nine eleven flights too? Yeah. Security was a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, when I was zero. It was pre nine eleven. Yeah. <laughs> you those were the days, right? But Gavin, to put it in perspective for you who don't travel a lot and how it can be difficult, you can probably relate to this at least. There was a point in time this year. When we went down to Sydney for RTX Sydney, and like five days before the trip, this very important thing came up at Sundance. I think it was related to was it related to Laser Team or related to Slumo Guys? I think it was Laser, it was laser Team. Laser Team <coughs> came up it was at Sundance Film Festival in Utah, and it was it was the Sunday of that weekend. So Gavin. Because he had commitments for like signings and stuff, he flew down to Australia for a day. Well, at first they said you did, you're just not going to Sydney. Yeah, it's like they were, they just canceled the thing for me. I was like, yeah. oh, what? And it's like, well, you'd have to leave after one day. I was like, yeah, that would be insane. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it. I'll see what. Oh. I'll see what it's like. It's madness. And that's probably twenty five thousand of your miles on that chart we just showed. Right? Yeah, I got gold in the first month. Yep. Yeah, that that flight is like twelve thousand there and back. I always do. I I. You're probably the same way. You get recognized a lot in airports, right? Yeah. And I, it was like the, the same thing as before, where I usually, if I meet someone in an airport, it's like, oh, you know, what are you doing in wherever? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? And it was that, at the point where I was like, what are you doing in, where am I? Sh Charlotte? What are you doing in Charlotte? Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where I am ever anymore. I had a TSA agent recognize me. He did the whole check. He's like, I'm going to lightly tap your your genital area, you know, his ball and ball. <laughs> get out of here. I was like, okay, yeah, okay, go for it. And he did it. He's like, Huge fan of Ruth's oh, <laughs> oh, no. Did he give you the nut punch? No. And, like, and he was like, sorry, you had to shake my gloved hand. I was like, no, it's fine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think that's great. You told me he could take the glove off and do it again if he wants? No. I was, I was like, all right, later. Uh, here, I got this thing to read. Go for uh, it. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high-quality ingredients taste better and are better for you, so it's important to know where your food comes from. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, 
family-run farms, fisheries, and ranchers. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Blue Apron features new recipes that are created each week by Blue Apron's culinary team and not repeated within a year. Each meal comes with step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. <coughs> Check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash roosterteeth. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash roosterteeth. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Big thank you to Blue Apron. I'm a huge fan of their service. All their food is delicious, and you will love it. If you could fly... If I could fly, I fly an, all the time. On an airline. On an airline. But on the front of every seat in front of you is a big red button, and it just says crash plane. <laughs> wow. And you can push the button, and if you push it and the plane lands, you get a million dollars. But if everyone pushes the button, the plane crashes. And not all at once, but over the course of the flight. Yeah. And you don't know how many people have pressed the button. Yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. indicator. Would uh, you ever press the button? Well, well, listen, so if 300 people push the button... But one doesn't. Three hundred people get a million bucks, or they split it too. They all individually get a million bucks. Oh, oh. Yeah, you, work, I, you work that shit out. Yeah, I'd be like, no, all right, but listen, you don't know. If- I'm not gonna push the button. You're gonna give me a cut of yours. And then, okay. Would you ever press the button? Sure. I mean, something could go wrong, right? I but think- something could go wrong on the plane anyway. Yeah, that's that's so rare. I feel like I would be the altruist like- <laughs> and not push the button. You would never press what's it. This, what's the scariest thing you've had happen on a plane, like closest to crashing? I would not push it. I wouldn't push a button. This is play. You would right. never push it. Well, if it's a million bucks, I guess I'd work it out somehow. But yeah, it, it, part of million me is like, dollars, don't push the fucking crash. I, the you plane might button. be in, a in plane my crash. head. I'd be relying on someone to be way more scared of crashing, like ultra scared. And that's true. Just... Like the dude next to me. Yeah, a I million dollars would... is easy though. You'd figure that shit out. Or what you do? <laughs> what do you mean you figure it out? Here's what I do: I get on the plane and I would look at the person next to me and I would go click, and I so they know that I push the button. That makes them way less likely to push <laughs> I it. I did it. Yeah. it was, I pressed it. <laughs> yeah. Just what? get on and immediately mash it. Wasn't there a a game show? Yes. In the UK with a very similar premise, it's a like, l- line a of truth guy, or something like that. And the guy and a guy broke the system. Right. Just completely. Yeah. By what? saying that he just like outright told the other guy, these "I'm going to push this. Balls. I'm going to push it." They had little like balls, and they had oh, like like golden share or steel golden yeah. balls. Oh, that was it. I'm going to was that a Jasper Carrot show? Uh-huh. Oh, no, Jasper. I can't. Yeah, I, I saw that. It was really interesting. And he was like, straight up, I'm just going to. I'm going to steal and it. People and then like, when we're done, I'll share the money with you. Right. And people would just sell each other out. Yeah, It'd yeah. Be awful. Brutal. I saw two great movies. I recently took a trip to France. I went over with Google. It was part of the vlog that I did uh, for Rooster Teeth. If you're watching this live, you might have seen the vlog. If not, you can see it after the podcast is done broadcasting. Well, I went over to France to be part of what is called MIPCOM, which is this... You you went to France last year for something similar. I went um, to Cannes. You went to Cannes. That's where I went. Cannes yeah. this year. Yep. And uh, it's where they like sell shows to international markets and things like that. I'm not really entirely sure what Google's goal was at this event because they were talking a lot about YouTube Red as a premium platform. Maybe they're trying to attract content to that platform or maybe there's a possibility they would sell content. I don't think they're going to sell content to their markets. They'll probably just end up rolling out YouTube Red in those places eventually. But anyway, I went over and presented and, you know, cool thing about YouTube is that whenever they do one of these big presentations like Brandcast or something like that, they always have somebody come out to represent the creators on YouTube. And this time they invited me to come out and talk about Rooster Teeth and everything else. So it's cool to be able to fly all the way to France, basically have an eight minute speech on stage in front of like 2,500 people and then that's it. So I was in France for like two or three days because I uh, had to take eight minutes to do on stage. It was perfect. Did they have the beach again? Yeah, so here's the problem. It rained the whole fucking time I was there. Oh, <laughs> it really? rained the whole time. And I was like, and I even said that in the vlog, I'm like, it's normally, like I was walking, Gavin, I was walking, we talked about this I'm sure on the last podcast or last year when we did this. Uh, I was walking down that row of all those fucking yachts yeah. that are just Did like you go on any? every single yacht. Yeah, but I went on it, but it wasn't a it wasn't a cool way to go on it, so I didn't like do anything with it. Like in the vlog, basically, there's a new thing there where now they all the businesses rent a yacht there, oh. and they have like a reception area on the yacht. Did you have to take your damn shoes off? Uh, no, I didn't have to. Yeah, no, oh. not the one I went on. But it was like, but they all have like little banners, like those printed banners, like "Hey, welcome to you know." You know, whatever distributor, and come on, <laughs> come on board and do this. Have do a free drink on us. So it's like a booth, but on a yacht. 
Kinda. That's cool. Yeah. Dan Kinda. would do a thing with Dan. Massive though. Dan would just, just walk like... onto someone's yacht. He'd be like, "Yeah, I'm at, for this party." And yeah. most of the time, he would just get let on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Go with a little bit of verve, a little bit of confidence. You're good to go. But it was it was uh, it was fun. But uh, I wish it was the weather had been a little nicer. Yeah, Japan is like one of the nicest like places in the world. It's so ago. it's great. Yeah. Uh, it was similar when when Dan and I went the year before, where we had like a ten minute thing, little talk up on the the stage, and it was like, all right. You know, you leave on Friday and it's Wednesday. And they had this inflatable couch, like, out in the ocean. And we would just swim out to it and just l- l- lounge around on this couch floating in the... Was it tethered ocean. to anything or was it just, like, free-floating in the ocean? It was anchored to the ground. It was, it was okay. pretty out there. You had to swim for, like, four or five minutes to get to it. So you swam from the beach or from the yacht? From the beach. Okay. So yeah. the only fo- one on the yacht any photos on it? No, I didn't bring my phone. I didn't bring your phone out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Do you... I mean, let me ask you a question. Do you get uncomfortable around like certain levels of opulence, like like that? Like I absolutely get, I, not. You don't at all. My no. buck. <laughs> You're good. I am totally comfortable in any I, level of hood. opulence. I just feel like it's too much. If you like, make my car velvet, but, but it's I totally honestly, cool. I really like feeling out of place. Oh, do you? Yeah, I like being surrounded by like this is way above what I should. I should not be here right now. I love that feeling. No, like, that that I like. I like experiences outside of my comfort zone. But it's just like. I just like, I get kind of, a, I don't know, a skeezy feeling. I don't know how to put it. Uh, I did a presentation in New York recently um, that was a really cool one. It was like, it was like one of the coolest like backstages I've ever been to. It was a podcast event, but there's a lot of people that had podcasts. Like I got to meet Katie Couric that day. And I was presenting with, um, uh, what's his name from NPR? Ira, Ira Glass. Glass mm-hmm. Him. And I'm uh, sorry, I don't listen to a lot of, a lot of NPR, but everybody was going nuts about this guy. Yeah. And, uh, and I was going nuts. Uh, about a guy that I've watched for years is Ed Bagley Jr. Oh, and yeah, he's yeah. like, he was on St. Elsewhere and all that other stuff. And uh, he's a huge environmentalist. And so we were going from the hotel or somewhere that we were, we were going to the event and an Uber showed up and it was a Suburban. It was a SUV. Mm-hmm. And Ed Bagley Jr. is like, I'm not getting in that. I, I was like, oh yeah, this is like, he's, his whole thing is environmentalism and Conservationism and uh, yeah, he's like, I'm not, I'm not getting into an SUV. I'll wait for the next one. That's fine. Like he just wouldn't get into an SUV. Can, wait can, for a Prius can, or something. Can I tell you the opposite of that story? Yeah, <laughs> I really respected that a lot. I really did. I was in New York the other day, and I had to go from uh, Thirty Rock to Newark Airport at like 5 p.m. during the peak of rush hour. And I was like, I'm not gonna make it. What'd I'm, you do? I'm gonna miss my flight. What'd you do? So uh, I was talking to the driver. I was like, Hey. Is there any way I could get on a helicopter? Yes. <laughs> Did you take really? a helicopter from Manhattan to the airport just to make sure I make it? Use yeah. There's an app. There's an app you yeah. can use in Manhattan. Really? To sketch to book a helicopter to take you to the airport. Yep. How much was it? Let me ask you that. I did not get on this helicopter. Oh. It was a thousand dollars for a six seater helicopter. Oof. And you split it however you want if you have enough people. But it would it would have been just me. Is there like Helicopter X or a Helicopter Pool where you can like share it with other people? <laughs> yes, you can set up like a crowdsourced you stop helicopter. And, <laughs> and you and just fucking throw a rope ladder up. down. <laughs> the, little, the little wire basket. But that's like the exact opposite of that. It's like someone who's like, I don't want to sit in traffic. Fuck the environment. Fuck everything. Fuck money. I will spend this extraordinary amount of money just to take five minutes to get to if the airport. If there's a place in which that would be a viable business... Manhattan is that place. They have it's, three heliports in Manhattan. Just that's to, it. I would figure they'd be more. Just to like highlight, uh, like this how, how prolific three it is. Right. I would this do one it app. not because it's like, oh, I'm skipping over the traffic. I'm so smart. It's like, yeah, you get a nice view of New York. And man, I would be very aware of the how long the journey was to the to the cost. Yeah, like, I'd be like, I'm spending over a hundred dollars a minute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would, I wouldn't take it because of that. It's, it's when I can visualize money just burning in front of me. I would just never spend it. That way. See, that's how I feel about like there was there was a time when I went down to Australia. I've probably told this story a thousand times. I'm gonna tell you it anyway. We went down to Australia, and I was traveling with Joel, and Joel is a nervous flyer, and he or he doesn't like to fly. Oh I don't know God. if nervous is the right word. So he convinced the convention to bring him down <laughs> business class to Australia, and they said, "Well, Bernie, since we're flying Joel business class." And you're on the same flight. We'll fly you business class as well. Do you want us to fly you business class? Which normally it's like when they just say you say you absolutely. Yeah, way to go. But I was like, I was like, well, how much is? What's the difference in price? And a ticket to Australia, you, just so you know, from like L.A. to Sydney is about two thousand dollars to fly, and that's if you get a good price. Yep. Like you buy it early, twenty five hundred dollars if you do, you know, like last minute or something like that. 
the price to go business class was like nine thousand oh. dollars. So it was like a seven thousand dollar difference. And you know, just just the way I was raised, it doesn't like matter like who's spending the money. It's like I was just calculating. I was sitting in a chair for basically 11, 12 hours. And it's seven thousand dollars for me to sit in a chair for if someone said, I'll give you I'll give you seven thousand dollars if you sit in that chair for twelve hours. I go, I will sit in the chair for twelve hours. I'll start right now. I will take that job. So it's like that's the way I looked at it. I was and like, you can get up and go to the bathroom if you want. Yeah. Like, right. It's like read a book. Whatever. Right. You do whatever least, you want to. Do whatever you want. It's like I it's like that's how I look at it. If I would take that job, like to do it, it's like that's a ton of money. You know what I mean? It's like it, obviously like no brainer I would take twelve hours of my day to like earn seven thousand dollars. So I was just like, I can't do it. Like I couldn't I couldn't get them to pay for it. So I flew coach and Joel flew business class. And of course I just slept the whole time and Joel was like up there tossing and turning <laughs> in business class. I had, so. fly, I had to fly to Australia with Joel and yeah, he was like, I don't sleep on planes. Uh, Which sucks. Yeah. If you can't sleep on a plane, it sucks, dude. Because Especially that one because it's 14, 12, 14 hours total we, from Austin. When we made it to the airport, he was just strung out because it was like 17 hours straight. He just didn't do anything but just sat there. I was like, God, I feel so bad for him. Which is why, you know, I do get why people fly business class because I got upgraded to business class from my, like my airline status. And I used miles for it, mm. um, and it was like the nicest flight ever. Mm. It was like 14 hours. I was in the air. It was coming from Asia, and when we landed, I was like, "I feel great. I feel fine. I had like a full night's rest." I'm sure I snored <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I've never once requested that I be flown anywhere business class because that to me is it's like something I would never spend my money on, and it to me seems pretty insane to request that if I'm going to go somewhere. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I can make you can make all these requests if it's like you're flying me here to do this job. You can make requests. Mm -hmm. I just for some reason will never be like you have to fly me business class because that to me is the douchiest thing. What if it's like a huge inconvenience? The, th the only time I would do it is if I had to fly through the night, like from the U.S. to London, okay. and I had to work that day. So usually you fly through the night and you land at like ten. Mm -hmm. If I was required to work that day. I would probably ask for business class just so I could actually sleep through the night and do a good job of whatever they want me to do. Makes sense. Hey, but that'd be the only time. So I, I'm convinced like too when I slept on business class all the time I just snored the entire time. I'm par I'm fucking paranoid about sn snoring on a plane. And there's a dude when I flew from Austin to Heathrow to go to this France trip, he snored the whole time. And uh, so he even said when he woke up, he goes, he said to the flight attendant, he goes, he goes, he goes, I didn't snore very much, did I? The flight attendant goes, that's because nobody cares. That's your prerogative. It's like he was like a oh really God. polite Britishman who said that to him. So I got this app that will record. Oh, just dimmed. Yeah, it'll record when I snore. Oh, so and it charts it over the course of a what? day. It accesses your microphone. So it's a mic. Yeah, it's like it sits there and like detects sound or whatever. Does and it record it, when you talk? Stop with this. It always wants me to rate shit. Like, do you have to enable it like when you're going to sleep, or yeah. how does that work? Okay. So you gotta read the chart there. Like, look, look Ooh. at the level that I hit at like. So you snored for Send like me that. an hour uh, let's, have, <laughs> let's have a snoring competition. I got- Let's have a snoring competition. It's, it's called Snore Lab. Snore it's, uh, Lab? I it hit, looks like you were topping out I for like an epic hour. Level. Look at that, Gavin. It's it, goes, it goes- screaming. I can beat you. I'm Mild, beat you. loud, and epic. And I got into the epic range at one point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you. You gonna beat me? Yeah. So does it save any of the recordings? Like it if you sure chat in your sleep? I would love for that to happen because I sleep talk wait, wait. a lot. <laughs> it records you. Really? Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fart, man. <laughs> I don't think it's that rhythmical, the fart. So snore it was Snore Lab? Snore Lab. Yeah. I got it. yeah. I'm, I'm totally, I'm it'll, totally it'll, it'll, You can set it like, I'll be asleep in about 15, 20 minutes. You tell it, and then it just starts recording you at that point in time or monitoring, and then it kicks on the recording if you start snoring. You've snored me awake a few times. Yeah, it happens. What are you going to do? Actually, now cuddle. is the point where she sleeps straight through it. So one, one year at. Uh, Pax West, we had these suites. It was like at the, like a Homewood Suites or something close to the convention center. Yeah, so me and like, you? No, no, not you. Okay. It was me and Jack. Uh -huh. We had to share this suite. It was like two bedrooms and a living room and a kitchen. He's really up and hmm? Jack's snoring was so loud. I had to <laughs> leave. I left the room. I was like, I left the room we were sleeping in. Why, <laughs> why were you sharing a room? <laughs> It was like they were sweets. They were, yeah, they were he sweets. had a bedroom had, and Gus had a bedroom. Right. It was like separate bedrooms. It's like, all right, this this makes sense. I was like, I, I cannot sleep in this room. I cannot be anywhere on the floor of this hotel. Because Jack was snoring so fucking loud. I love it. It was <laughs> awful. Um Yeah. I but, just on, oh. on the way back, um another another travel story. On the way back from Seoul, when I was leaving, I was going to the airport, I asked the hotel front desk, I was like, listen, I've got a flight, four forty PM. What's the best way to get to the airport? 
Like, okay, if you want to go to the airport, there's a nonstop bus. There's like a, an airport bus that stops across the street and it'll take you straight to the airport. Uh, you need to go there and check in there at least three hours before your flight. I was like, okay, if I go there, I check in three hours before my flight, I'll get to the airport plenty of time. They're like, yeah, no problem. Great. I showed up at that place three and a half hours before my flight. That's your problem. Got my ticket. Follow your rules. Get on the bus. I've never been more pressed for time at an airport. Yeah? I was running through that fucking airport. Ugh. I was well, like, where was the bottleneck? Traffic. Oh. Like, by the time I got to the airport, it was like, they were, by the time I got to my gate, they were already halfway through boarding. What city was this again? Seoul. Seoul. I was like, I've never been that close to not getting on an international flight. I hate that feeling of stress, like, like trying to get on a I plane. trusted other people. But you know, that's a judgment. choice that you make. You can choose whether to be stressed out or not. When I was, I, I was on a panel, because whenever I'm, like, feeling stressed, and, like, sometimes I've, I've been so late, I, I've tried to check in, yeah. and, like, the person will be like, you better run. And I think, oh, Christ, am I really that? Am I really going to miss this yeah, flight? Yeah. And I just think... I'm not going to run. If I miss the flight, I'll just get the next one. It'll be fine. And I just take my time. I don't let my heart rate go up. And it's fine. So I, it's just fine. It's just like, you can, you can choose not to be stressed, you know, as long as you're not seriously in trouble if you miss the flight. You know flight. who's really calm about that? Is my ex, Jordan. She would, we'd be really? late everywhere. Uh, and I'd be like, you know, we're supposed to be somewhere at 9. So we leave the house at 8.40. And I know it's going to take half an hour to get there. And we're late. <laughs> we're going to be late. We're late. And she had this thing where she's like, no. She goes, we're not late until it's after nine o'clock. Like that was the whole thing. She was totally like relaxed about it. Didn't give a shit. One of the Holm's that way too. Just like being late. He's like he because he lived in L.A. for so long. He's like, mm. we're gonna be there about ten minutes late. That L.A. Happens. people are like that. Yeah, it doesn't give a shit. Ezra's like that. Yeah, he's from L.A. as well. <laughs> people from L.A. are like, yeah, we're gonna be up forty minutes late for this meeting. And so yeah. I was like, all right, I'll be like at the restaurant and I'll just be like, I guess you know, it's nine o five. He'll be here soon. He's like, yeah, I'm twenty minutes away. It's like, all right, I could have. You know, 25 minutes. I could have had a shower. I could have done so much <laughs> stuff. You could be like, have your meal and get the check <laughs> yeah. in 25 minutes. Kind of in that same vein of just like not worrying about being late and stuff like that. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I got in college was your grade is not a representation of who you are as a person. Yeah, it is. Is after like, yeah, totally. it's not though. You know, I, totally. I had like a really hard test and I got like a D on it. No, you're like a bad person. I fucking flunked it. And a guy calmed me down. And then after that, I was just like, no, oh, he's right. And I was like, Rest of college was like a little bit more of a breeze because I was like, just don't sweat it. You have to be a repeat offender before it's a judge of who you are. True. But like you're late all the time, so I assume you're just a late person. Who me? Yeah. No, I'm punctual as hell. You've missed flights. You know, sometimes stuff happens. You, you really missed several flights. Yeah. Shit happens. You know. You get Shit happens over and over again, and that's the issue. I did not miss my flight going to LA. I went to. The, I was on a panel this weekend. I was on a panel with. Uh, an old friend of ours was the moderator. Shira Lazar was the moderator. Yep. She says hello. I was oh, yeah. with, with uh, Rafi Fine as well. It's always good to see him of the Fine Brothers. And uh, I was going out there. I was flying out Saturday night for a Sunday panel. And I'm going to the airport. It usually takes me about 15 minutes to get to the airport, which is amazing considering where I live. It's just like, it's, it's like I just have this like perfect straight shot to the airport. Now that Austin is finally a fucking city where you don't have to wait at a red light to go to the airport. Finally, after 20 years of living here. What do you mean? What changed? They, they made an underpass. It used to be there was a fucking red light right before you got <laughs> to the airport. Oh, you don't know. You don't drive. Yeah, yeah I know you don't you drive. It's, it's all the same when you're in the fucking back of the I was Uber. just asking for the sake of the audience. Go, go fuck off. Go fuck off. It was, it's the Riverside and 71 mm -hmm. light that was there for fucking ever. And they made took, they built an underpass. It took them like two years to fucking build it. How long ago was that? No, nah. it was uh, right as I started dating Ashley. So so about four years ago. Okay. Like her, like they were wrapping it up. Like her third trip to Austin, we we drove under that for the first I time. I was amazed. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 no one's gonna relate to it, but I was like, it was like heaven. Anyway, I we we left and we had you know, fifteen minutes to get to the airport, so I'd be there an hour early. I got there five minutes after the plane started boarding. Because fucking 80,000 people went to go see Taylor Swift. Oh, this week. right, right. 80,000 people. It, like, I have video of it. I can't, I don't have the... Hey, Bernie, Bernie, shake it off. Ta <laughs> Taylor Swift, dude. <laughs> I was like, I was like, holy shit, it was just packed. And then it turns out some guy, like, also decided to climb up on that, you know, that huge overpass on 71 that goes to 35? And yeah, he was sitting up there like yeah. he was going to jump. And it's like, listen, I know it's a person in trouble. But you know there's like 
5,000 people in traffic going, fucking dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're all so pissed. And then we got off the freeway. It like they did the thing where they shut the freeway and you had to get off. Yeah. And then we had to go through like four lights and then get back on. As soon as we like cleared, 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 and got off the freeway and got fully off, they pulled all the cones up and everybody went. Yeah. So I was just like, I was like, you motherfuckers. Yeah. But I still made my flight. I'm not like you. I made my flight still. Yeah, not a bad person. I stopped a uh, a class once because I thought I saw like a suicide jumper. Uh, we were like having class. I looked outside on top of the parking garage. A dude was just like sitting there, like looking over the edge, and I was like. Oh, that guy's gonna kill himself. So I was like, "Hey, teacher, uh, there's a guy out there." And I was yeah. a little bit more urgent about it. And then, like the rest of the class, everybody was just like watching. And then, like the security guards came up and talked to him. Apparently, he was up there just writing poetry or some bullshit. Just sitting. Oh, away. he was a he was a hipster. Yeah, but it was like, yeah, with this tense thirty minutes of uh, watching if this guy was gonna jump. You know, that's why they shut the UT Tower. People think it's because a guy got up there and shot a bunch of people. It's because people jumped off of it. Yeah, they oh. fenced it off. How many people jumped off? A bunch. It's actually a yearly thing that a, a kid at UT will commit suicide, and it's mostly around finals. Mm -hmm. So it's gotten to the point where it's they very they put dogs that are like you know those like nice little dogs that you can pet. What are oh, they called? Like therapy, therapy dogs. dogs. Like service dogs. And then they also hang out posters, and it's like your grades are not L worth your listen, life. Listen, what Blaine said is correct. Your grades are not you. I failed many finals. It's fine. <laughs> there's yeah, there's, but there's, you're a piece of shit. No, no you, you <laughs> can mean, be a pe you can be a piece of shit, and that's fine. Is your argument here that Don't you're a worry. success? You yeah, think? I'm a success. Look what I did. <laughs> I get to he sit was, here. He was just in South Korea. Yeah, you know, it's okay. funny because I was thinking about you because I've been playing Civ Six. Mm -hmm. Day, do you? So we got all set up. Me and the boys this weekend. Ashley says she's not going to do it, but she played Civ till like five in the morning the other day. Shit. So she's secretly a Civilization fan now. I know she's she like is. a hardcore. She Lunatic does not, of a person. She sometimes. doesn't fuck around. She does this thing. So we're, we're gonna have a little talk about it. Where we have a TV in our room, and she just like when she decides she's gonna binge watch a show, she just like watches it. She's watching fucking Charmed. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen Charmed, it's a shitty fucking show from the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> fucking terrible. She seems like she's like a, a normal person. Like you meet Ashley, you talk to her, you spend time with her. It's a normal chick. It's a normal woman. But then a little too old for Blaine. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> kind of motherly. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> But yeah, then she she'll be like super hardcore into something. And be like, oh, I just stayed up till six a.m. She had to fuck around. She, yeah, she can walk watch it like a '90s, 2000s sitcom. Well, watch Buffy. Don't talk about my girlfriend, please. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Blake. So, I, I haven't had a chance to play Civ Six. Like I said, I really haven't had a chance to play too much. I've been out of town a lot. But there is one game I've been playing with my wife. So I've been trying to introduce Esther to virtual reality. So we've been playing this weekend. We played a ton of Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard about this. Yeah. Yeah, like she's the bomb diffuser and I'm the manual guy. Do you have good communication skills? We have really good communication. We're really good at you that make game. A video. I am not good at that game with my kids. Because you yell them? They get no. You, well, maybe. You <laughs> <panic>. <laughs> That'll probably be their their perspective you, on it. Do you not listen to them or they don't listen to you? They panic. Oh, they panic. Well, it's funny like, and they argue, them. and I'm like, because <laughs> they play together, and I'm like doing one thing, and then the, when they play together, they argue. It's like, it's like, no, no Teddy, this is the page, and I can't see it. And like, you know, it's like, Teddy's like, I put the page over here. It's like, and I'm like blind, going, just read the page. Yeah. That, that's that's a really really fun game. I think it's a good introduction for someone who uh, maybe hasn't necessarily experienced VR before. Yeah. So it's, it's like not a good very VR game, but it's good asymmetrical gameplay. It's a good way to like separate. Your, sure, I mean, your you could also just play it on a screen, though. Yeah, not you, like you could, but it's a way to like block off that person's vision. Sure, and like you know, make sure that they're not looking at the other stuff. I've gotten almost. We talked so much about travel today. I've gotten almost like none of my notes. Yeah, let me read this while I look at your notes. Uh, also, a while before Gus starts reading that, uh, oh, where it's, it's part before. of the point of the podcast, I'll look on Twitter now. I'm sorry, I haven't been looking at Twitter, uh, but I will look at it right now. And if there's anything that we tried to talk about and got off on a tangent, and we should come back to it, I just think let me know right now. We actually have to start. Subjects to finish them. Yeah, this has been a weird one. We're <laughs> a lot, lots of trouble. <laughs> Everyone missed me. I've got so many subjects to start. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Rishi <laughs> Podcast is brought to you by Brain Tree Payments. By next year, maybe even next week, there could be a whole new way to pay. Maybe it'll be the next Bitcoin or the next Apple Pay or maybe even both. Fortunately, Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, so you can adapt easily too. Accept everything from pounds to PayPal to that next big innovation from any device with just one integration. And when that new payment method comes out, all you have to do is update a few lines of code. No late nights, no complicated recoding, no stress about staying ahead of the curve. Braintree Payments is here to help. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash roosterteeth. That's braintreepayments.com slash roosterteeth. Big thank you to Braintree Payments for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Uh, I stayed in a weird area <laughs> of L.A. I'd never stayed in before last week when I was there. Where? 
I, I did that recently too. I was in Ontario, California, oh, right was, there. I was not out there, but I was I was like close to Beverly Wood. What is that? Between Beverly Hills and Hollywood. Well, you've been through there, I'm sure. Everywhere up there has the same names. This is like Hollywood, Remixed. West Hollywood, the remix. Westwood. There were so different places. Silver it was, Lake, West Lake. It was a very. Um, There's no West Lake. <laughs> it, it was like uh, there was a heavy Jewish population there. Oh, wow. Racist. And I'd never seen a kosher Mexican restaurant before, but our hotel was uh, right down the street from a what does that mean? restaurant that called. Limit? Mexicosher. Well, that, no, you can't. You, can't, you couldn't do it. <laughs> no pork tamales. No, one Fuck of the, that. one of the big rules in kosher, Ow. from what I understand, I, I guess there's probably all different variations of it. But one of the rules I understand in keeping kosher is that you can't eat meat with cheese. You can't eat. I thought it was just no pig meat. Mexicosher, oh. real Mexican kosher, real good. Yes, really. I'm looking at their website. <laughs> yes, really. You know it's a good slogan there, but it really it is. We promise. <laughs> so wait, wait. What's the definition of kosher then? Well, kosher is like a set of rules. By so which you no prepare pork. and consume food. No, you just you, that's like the most baseline thing that you just said. There's there's way more rules than just no pork. Well, way more. I just said one, asshole. No I meat said, with cheese. You can't you can't eat the milk of the animal with the meat of the animal. So you could have chicken with cheese, I assume, or you could have beef with goat cheese, but there's no like a cheeseburger, that's right out. <sighs> Not having it. Mm. What's, what's halal? It's like uh, blessed me. Oh, that's Mexico sure. It's right there. <laughs> really good. I'm gonna eat there next time I go. Uh, halal is like uh, the Islamic version, basically. It's like a certain way that the animal has to be butchered. Yes. And right. um, the, the the meal is prepared in a very so specific. I way. wanted to eat Indian food because I can't. It, Ashley, after our trip to India to do the Baba documentary, which by the way I should point out in our previous discussion about miles, I did not get full miles for because apparently they used my they used uh, points from the company to buy my ticket. What so, did they use to buy mine? Probably just they put on a card, you know. They probably just paid full fare for yours. But mine, it's like uh, they booked me and they used points for me, and I lost like ten thousand miles as a result. So I'd be you I'd didn't be lose them. You never had. Them. I bet <laughs> I would be a smidge closer to you. I'm looking at their website. I don't see any cheese in any of these. Yeah, colors. yeah. See, that makes sense. Right. That's that's like half of Mexican food, though. Well, no, meat no, and no, cheese no, specifically. Not. So queso. But Get the um, fuck out of here. Now there's other rules. We should have somebody come on and explain kosher, like in fully explain it, Perhaps because it's one of those things I think people hear all the time and don't know. Like blood. Gavin's an idiot when it comes to that. I'm an idiot. Well, for being kosher, because you thought it just meant no pork. I and think that's you're smart, it. Gavin. That's the big rule. Oh. I, all I know is that what is this? Kosher, oh. not kosher. Cow, sheep. It's even that. D- a deer. So What's I was right. Not kosher is a bear. All I see on the not kosher <laughs> is pigs and a oh, bunch reptiles. of shit. I would never shellfish. Eat. Yeah, shellfish aren't kosher. But okay. I think it's also they're, the combination. Because they're bottom feeders. Oh, man. So it's it's some fish. Ostrich. What? Who in Israel was going, we can't eat those ostriches that we've never seen before? <laughs> I mean, See, or does it like fall some classification? I was like, like kosher's no pork. And you're like, no, idiot. It's other stuff. Ost- ostriches. You can't have those either. It's a it, bunch of food nobody's going to eat. But it's also other well, rules like no meat and cheese at the same time. It's saying it's All more right. than just don't eat, don't eat bacon. So it's <laughs> more than that. By the way, bacon in the restaurant closed down. <coughs> they say they're coming back. Oh yeah, I think the, they were just there were problems with that specific location. Yeah, okay. it was flooding. A lot. Um, yeah, it was restaurant. like flooding. It was, it was in a kosher. So, um, but I was gonna say when I was gonna go, oh. I was going to L.A. I got in at like nine forty-five, and PM or AM? P- PM. And it's like a f- uh, a half an hour trip up from LAX to where I was staying. I stayed at the Standard. I should have taken a picture of this. I don't know why I didn't. I'm an idiot because I didn't do it. The Standard Hotel on Sunset Boulevard. It's like over the top ridiculous like hipster so much so that i'm checking in at the front desk and it's a dude in front of me on the other side of a counter normal so far right yes behind the dude at like eye level in the wall behind him is like a glass aquarium a big one but there's no water in it there was an old dude in a gold suit laying down on a divan like Laid out there, there. Well, that's that's the other people they have, and but my night it was an old dude in a gold suit reading a book. Wait, is it a real person? It's yeah, it's a real person. What are they? Why? Like, in fact, I saw the dude walk up because I guess he was on break, and then he gets like in and gets back. How the fuck did you find that picture in two seconds? But the picture that I sent you, you took you twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then he gets up and he gets in the booth with his book and he's just he's just lounging back there. That's so, his job. He's be the guy in the bo- in the in the box. I, I would, bet he's getting paid seven grand to sit there. Probably he probably is making some good. I money. would like to think that that's like he doesn't know what he's doing. He, it's like glass. <laughs> guy goes in there and starts jerking off. And he doesn't need to go to this <laughs> hotel. What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> just so funny. But I got into like I so it took me half an hour. So I get there about ten fifteen, and I I wanted Indian food. 
Ashley will never eat Indian food anymore because she got sick on the trip to India, and our director, Matt Hames, did as well. Gavin and I were like the only people who didn't get sick. But Ashley's still to the point where she still won't eat Indian food yet. That's so good, though. And it's so good. It's Although, so good. I will say this. American yeah. Indian food is trash. Yeah. I know, but it's all I can get. What am I going to do in L.A.? And it's a little bit better in L.A. than it is in Austin, to is be it? honest with you. I think so. So I was going to get some when I was there, but it's 10.15. I get to the hotel. I look up. The closest place is 10.30, right? Close. So I'm like, and they do delivery, but okay. they close at 10.30. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, what am I going to do? You don't want to spit tikka masala. Right. Guess, guess what I fucking found out. So Andy Cortez, where were you? He's down in San Antonio. He ordered a Domino's pizza at 1.59 p.m. or a.m. In the, like he was drunk coming back from an RTX thing or a Rooster Teeth meetup thing. He gets back to his hotel. He tells me he got a pizza at 1.59 on Domino's. He ordered it. At that's 1. awesome. I would. I. I. I could never. That's such a dick move. It's no, a dick it's move. move. You it's ate like, sperm. That that pizza sure. is like 40 percent spit. Yeah. But think of it. They probably shot at 2:30. They probably don't shot at two. They just cut off at two. What but time he was close, like Andy? watching the little tracker going like, they yeah, get two. real work late. Yeah, but they don't, they don't get off at two, probably. <laughs> you know they're... There, there should be an app. You know they're pissed off, like... You know they're pissed. They're like, case, they were like, they already started cleaning. There yep. should be they an app that go. tells you when stuff's about to expire. Like, oh, you can, you can no longer order Domino's in five minutes. That'd be great. I'm always super apologetic whenever I go into a restaurant and they're like 45 minutes from closing. I'll be like, I promise I'm just going to like blow through this meal. I'm so sorry. Because like... Oh, that you're an asshole. I and, really yeah, I gotta give any props for that. He did tip the how guy much like tip? twenty bones. Twenty bucks? Yeah. How I bet he felt really bad pizza? for it. He was also drunk. Pizza. It was uh, I guess I had accumulated enough points for the pizza to scream. <laughs> a free <laughs> pizza. A free pizza. <laughs> Who the fuck has domino <laughs> points? Oh, you got a Fanta as well. Is a I love Fanta. the scoff from off screen. Orange? I like you come home drunk. Orange, orange is good Fanta. I like you come home drunk and you order a pizza and a two liter bottle of Fanta. What are you, a fucking juggaloo? What are you doing? No, that's not Fanta. Oh, that's Fanta. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I was, I was at this, uh, this, this hotel in this part of LA I've never been in before, and I was there with Jeff. No offense, by the way, if you're listening and you're a fucking juggaloo. And recently? No this, offense. It was last week. Fuck, was this <laughs> hotel room, there was no mini bar. And this hotel had no bar. Also known as Jeff's former hotel. So, <laughs> we're there, uh, we got to dinner, we come back to the hotel, we're like, we need a drink. He's like, we'll just ask the front desk. No, no, I, I said, okay, there's a Walgreens, like a block away, I can see it from the hotel. We'll just walk over there, we'll buy like a six pack and, and just hang out. Right. Or here's a novel concept. No, we're not, don't gonna, drink we're not gonna not drink. Just don't drink for the so night. So we That's walk madness. to the Walgreens, and uh, we walk up to the cooler, and an employee's like, can I help you? Like, yeah, where's the beer? The employee's like, oh, we don't sell beer. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. Like in California, like grocery stores sell hard liquor. And you guys are like, I hate you. It was like, oh, okay, this is You're weird. The worst person so we ever. walk back to the, the hotel, and uh, there's a woman working at the front desk and ask her, hey, is there a place around here I can buy beer? She goes, oh, yeah, there's a bar up the street. It's about a mile and a half that way. Mile and a half? And, yeah, a mile and a half in LA. Like, what? I was like, is there just like a convenience store I can walk to and just buy like a six pack? It's like, oh, yeah, there's a 7 Eleven a mile down the street in that direction. It's like, are you telling me there's no closer place to buy beer here? You're in like a two mile, like, total <laughs> diameter. Right. Yeah. I was like, she's like, no, no, that's it. I was like, so we walked that mile to that 7 Eleven to how buy beer. you guys were. Yeah. Listen, when I, when I get to the mini bar, I will look at the mini bar. There's two things I will always eat. Would you like to guess what they are? Uh, at the mini bar? Uh, 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 uh. Almond Dimonims. Toblerone. No, you no, eat. Uh, dude, I found out something about Toblerone that, like, ruined. Anyway, I'll talk you to you eat, about it in a second. You <laughs> eat a nut. Nope. What? Oh, 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 no, I know, I know the answer! Pringles. What is it? Gummy bears. It's go gummy bears <laughs> is definitely one of them. Totally gummy bears. I will eat the gummy bears if they have them, and I will also eat the, the small can of Pringles. Yep. That fucker's gone in a second. If That's ridiculous. That's so much money. Right. Yeah, but it's right there. It's like $3 for that can. Oh, oh, dude. It, in, in Vegas, there was Fiji water, uh, which is already stupid expensive. It is. That's one in, that comes in the square bottle. In the mini bar. Sixteen dollars, not including tax. Fuck Just drink you. out of a tap. I don't understand people's aversion. Well, that's also ridiculous. That could be gammy. It's not gammy. It could be gammy. You don't know where the water's from. Best country in the world. You know, in, in Vegas? You yeah, think yeah, Vegas say. water? Yeah. Vegas is the best city in the world. Even Watch the, the fucking even the glass air is funny. weird. Even the air, the air is weird. <laughs> You're right. It is a little weird. Dan lost money again. How much did he lose? Did he? He lost two hundred bucks. <laughs> Will, who runs live action. He he went out for your Slow Guy shoot. There was a production <coughs> delay, so then he was out in L.A. or excuse me, Las Vegas. They had the production delay. 
He had to come back to Austin and then go back to Vegas. What? I think Alan did again. the same thing, but Alan just stayed in Vegas for That's, 10 days. Well, what a fucking shock. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm amazed that you said that. The, uh, so he probably wanted to make sure that everything went perfectly. He actually, <laughs> Alan was leaving the day of the shoot. It's customer service. Alan was leaving the day of the shoot, and then uh, he found out that we were all staying a night and leaving the next morning. He was like, I'm going to change my flight. Because <laughs> he has, like, the worst FOMO. Sounds cheap. <laughs> change your flight the day of. No big deal. Uh, so we, Will went out there. He lost 200 bucks on the trip when he went out. Then he came back, and he was miserable about that, I guess. Then when he went back out, he won 400 So now he's up to You know why? Because of the production delay. Because he was betting with me. And also, he got Dan's money. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, every time... Well, the first time I went to... I've only gambled once. I went to Vegas, put 100 on, black, won it, 200. Then I was like, I'm never gambling again. Dude. That's okay. it. You should, why'd, you do, why'd you break it? This time, everyone was like, oh, you're so lucky you do it again. I was like, I'm not doing it. I put 100 Who's on... Who's putting pressure on you? Oh, just everyone ever. So yeah. I was like, yeah, peer pressure, let's do it. I've Don't had a few. fuck off. I've had a few bevs. Okay. I put 100 down on black again. Won it. Had 200. Wow. And I was like... Walk away up. And then Will was like... You're on, you're on a roll, man. A roll of one. He's like, where are we going? What are we doing next? I was like, roll of four. We'll put it on red. You and, I, roll. and I put my 200. You have rolled. I put my 200 on red. And? One again. Oh! 400. Called it there. Good. Just Good took, took the four Benjamins. So you still have never lost, you've never lost I a bet. I am 100% wow. success rate on roulette. Well, I had something. But like, yep. I was calling some, like, I wasn't betting. I was just doing it in my head. I was like, I would pick black right now. And I kept losing in my head. So I was like. I'm out. Get out. Walk but then away. I won twice, so, you know, who knows? So I did something this weekend where uh, there was a half-drank bottle of water. Like one of those plastic bottles, like an Aquafina bottle. Context, <laughs> where? You found it? Uh, the where, street? Where the fuck was I? <laughs> I feel like I, it's quite important to the story. Yeah. No, he asked me. You asked me the question, so I'm trying to answer the question. You could have been in a... No, no, I, I think maybe I was... The panel was at the Director's Guild of America. Is so one of the, is those kids that were doing that whole, like, flip... Thing where so I grabbed it, it. I grabbed the bottle and I'm like, I'm like, oh, check it out, bottle flip. And I like took it and I threw it across the room. It lands on the table <laughs> and sticks the landing. Nice. I did it, I did it perfect. And I've never even tried it before. I've never even done that before. So now I'm a hundred percent lifetime on bottle flip. And you'll I'm, never do it again. I'm never gonna do it again. I'm a hundred percent lifetime. What, what if, do you know what is the other thing that I'm a hundred percent lifetime on? Do you know? Oh, I, I feel like guys? I just knew it. What, what does that mean? What? <laughs> Slow mo guys, you press the button. That's a thing. Oh, no, me, not oh. him. He is 100% lifetime. Yeah, I've right never now. missed a trigger. And I Gus, guess. you know what is the thing that I'm 100% lifetime on? I have on? no idea. I'm, I'm never going to do it, it again. Field goal kicking. Oh, I kicked a field goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. kicked one field goal from 25 yards, and they're like, that was pretty, it was fucking, it was flat, like a duck, like, like spinning, like yeah. flat spin. And they were like, wow, that was, let's back up to 35 yards. I go, I'm never yeah. doing that again as long as I live. I'm 100% <laughs> lifetime. Have you ever gone out on your own and kicked one just to see what it was like? Yep. No, because that, that would ruin it. You, yeah. yeah. I'm not like you. I'm not tempting fate. You're not ruining it if nobody knows about it. Oh, uh, that's not, that's, you listen. That's like, that would be like if you went to McDonald's and ordered something that wasn't a Big Mac. I know. The thing is, I'm really craving other things on the McDonald's menu. Gavin has never eaten anything but a Big Mac whenever he's gone to McDonald's. I've never What's ordered something? anything that wasn't a Big Mac. We had a little smidge, a little bite of something. So I've had a, a nug. Mid? I've had someone else's nug before. I got you. And also, I guess my parents bought me a Happy Meal in the past. And I've never had a Big Mac ever, my whole life. That's lunacy. Me too. Yeah. No one's asking you, Andy. So you, I reached a point. I reached a point when I was like, I mean, these people <laughs> off screen are just like chipping in. <laughs> what about you, Nick? Have you ever had a Big Mac? I mean, are we gonna ask everybody else who's not? Hey, give him twenty dollars. But to be fair, when we have an audience of one, it's like dedication. You can ask him, but he can't chip in. Why not? Because that's the way it works. We side mic. What happened to the, the side mic? Because it's not here. Guess what? What else have you never had, Andy? A whopper. Great. Everyone wants to know. I value your. Guess opinion. what you're never gonna have now? A seat on the podcast. <laughs> oh, shit. Can we just lock the door from now on? <laughs> Gus, Gus is done with Which you. Which door? The door that everyone <laughs> the works. Door, the door we need to get out if there's an emergency. Guess what I found out about Blaine in the when we were sitting here chatting on the couch beforehand. He's not into Ashley. <laughs> yeah, I found that out. The he every week on Sunday, he eats a full large pizza from Home Slice. Oh yeah, it's my tradition. That's Every awesome. Sunday. Yesterday That's I awesome. mixed it up and got a large pizza from Via 313 though. Which is like oh, Detroit. Via 313, going back to an earlier like topic, <laughs> Via 313 has Fago. Have oh, you had the Fago root beer? Fago root beer is fucking amazing. Fago? Really? I saw that the, that go. was what they were selling and I was like, oh, that's a silly name. It's I didn't get so it. good. Okay, I'll get yeah. it next time. You, you gotta absolutely have a Fago root beer yeah, if you go to Via 313. Dude. It's Detroit style pizza and I guess Fago is based out of and Detroit. And what does Detroit style pizza mean? It just means square? Square and thicker. 
Is that what it means? Yeah. yeah. I think it has something to do with P- the People sauce. keep asking on Twitter what you found out about Toblerones. They're dying to know. <clears throat> oh, Two yeah. things I need to go back and talk about. What I found out about Toblerones. Wait, what, let's, should we guess what you found out about Toblerone? Uh, You're going to be disappointed. Labor. You're never going to look back. You're never going to look back. Bat shit. What? Okay. Another thing, you know? They're more. not made go of one really yeah. long Toblerone that's cut up into smaller <laughs> ones. What? Oh, <laughs> you mean there's like, it's a, like one Toblerone that's coming off and they cut off pieces of it? Yeah. You're pretty close, actually, believe it or not. What? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a further hint. Airport Toblerone. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. The duty-free yeah. airport Toblerone. Yeah, it's I know not, what this it's is. It's not cheaper. It's no. from America? So the Toblerone that you see in the airports that's this big? Okay. They're not it, all that big. Do you know that... We, Gavin. It's like Toblerone. The ones you see at the airport that are like, they're massive. I'm holding my hands about like two or three feet apart. That's just like the medium Toblerone. What is is that? There's the the super long, the ones that are like Toblerone and on and on and on and on. That one. Okay, so that one. But you haven't seen that in the airport. I probably haven't. It's like a Gandalf stick. Why'd you bring it up then? Because you're like, oh, this one. It's like, there's loads of different sizes. Gavin, Toblerone. I'm just talking about the mat. When you see the big Toblerone. The big one. The big jumbo Toblerone. Yeah, the medium one. If medium? You... Okay, it's bigger than like every other candy bar on the fucking planet. This massive The medium Toblerone. Toblerone. What am I gonna say about it? It's not a big Toblerone. It's not a big Toblerone. Oh, what, what the fuck is this? That's a big Toblerone, bitch. That's, a, that's gotta be <laughs> that's Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> Normally it's a bunch You're of talking smaller about Toblerones. That they're all stacked in a... It's a just, it's a bunch of small Toblerones yeah, in a big package. it's like oh. three on the bottom and one on the top to make the pyramid shape. Yeah. That's but fucking horrible. You can get a big one, is what I'm telling you. Where that is that Photoshop? Does that guy really get that's that? That's a real Toblerone. No, there's, that, there's no way he can that. Really that, help, that. That, that helps keep the kid in me alive. That, that would be so heavy. If I you was a kid and I got that like massive that. Toblerone, I'd be like, oh my god, what this difference is the greatest thing ever. It's a bunch of and you open it, it's a way. bunch of normal ones. That's in, in fact, that's less gap. That's, that's less Photoshop. air gap than a load of... That might be Photoshop. That's Photoshop. That's totally Photoshopped. How is it less air gap? I feel like the chunk would fall All off. the individual candy bars have the gap. Smaller gap than a big wedge that's this big. Look at that air. It's just scaled up. It's not. Look, if you, st- if you, okay, take the volume of the air in a massive Toblerone, and then one of four Toblerones steps to each other. that Science. Toblerone weighs more. It's just scaled. Than what the other Toblerones weigh. Because there's less weigh. air. What? What? It weighs <laughs> more because there's less air? Yes, that yeah, is correct. Why are you laughing? That's true. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. Oh. Yeah, there's less air. So the big one is more value. Heavier. Right. Right? <laughs> what? Wait, what did I say? <laughs> well, you just started arguing <laughs> against yourself. So if I have... If <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I meant the other thing. I meant the other so thing. Let's, let's work this out. So if I have a dozen donuts... Okay. And one big fucking donut... <laughs> does, does the hole in the middle of all the little donuts add up to the same volume as the hole in the middle of the big donut? What hole in the middle of the big donut? Oh, it's a big ring donut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the other kind of donut. But that's not it's not something you can quantify in that way. It depends <laughs> on who made it. <laughs> I told their own they all have the they all have the standard gap. It's a standard gap in there. Yeah. And they the, just uh... scale it up. So if you're filling up the space with Toblerones, then you're making like essentially the same volume of Toblerone air to chocolate ratio. I just think the only bigger... difference is the difference in the packaging that ends up inside of it. I look forward Fuck to it. the weekly questions answered from the podcast. <laughs> I'm article. sticking with this I've, one. I've, I've, I, I'm with you, Bernie. Sticking I, I, with I it. cannot wait for someone else to do the research and do the math. Get that and look, tell us. What's his name? Get the guy, like, get, a, get some Toblerone and start measuring. Look up get the longest calipers. Toblerone you can buy as well. Get that little... <laughs> longest Toblerone the I can buy. Is the question still on the table as to whether that huge one is actually a real thing or not? Is, is yes. Something up for debate. Have you seen the massive Toblerone? No. Okay. I I feel like they would have to have a specialty machine to make that big of a Toblerone. I'm gonna. Which I'm there's gonna, there's lots of, like that. That's what you see at the airport. That's a no, fucking that's, lie. That's I'm a gonna, medium Toblerone. Well, they're actually a smaller one below. I would venture to say that that's not real. The the giant one. So what is the second thing about Toblerone that you don't like? Slave labor. <laughs> I don't think there was two things about what was. Oh this? my god, there, oh. It, that's that's real. What? No, it, what is this? Photoshop. This can't be right. Order me if there's a giant Toblerone, I'm gonna order it. There tomorrow. is a giant. Toblerone. There's a giant a ten pound Toblerone bar. Noxious Toblerone. Is that what's in that around. package? Because in that package is a bunch of smaller Toblerone. I don't believe this airport, website. But if you go into Martin's or something, what's Martin? Yeah. It's the local news agent <laughs> in the town I grew up. Really got a waitress. <laughs> the uh, so what was? I don't think I said there's two things I don't like about Toblerone. You did. Two things I don't like about Toblerone. Two. 
Yeah, what was largest the largest Toblerone in production? I'm gonna go order it. Takes weeks to consume. Order it. Eighty centimeters. What's that in inches? Eighty centimeters is five. Well, uh, <laughs> it is of a meter. Thirty-one inches. It's it's eight. It's thirty-one eight tenths inches. of a meter. So slightly less than three feet. I'm gonna buy this. Oh my god, you're my hero. Yo, are you really? How much is it? Uh, one hundred and ten dollars. <gasps> how do you how do you go about eating that though? You just like. You'll find out. See it on Sunday. We're gonna find out on Monday yeah, when we have it on the podcast. You chisel it. Did I? Did I say I? There's two things I don't like. About you said there were two things. That I don't like about Toblerone. Yeah. yeah. Fuck a duck. And I, I, I said like, there's two things. And one of them's Toblerone. And one of them is Toblerone. So you won't eat a mini bar Toblerone because that's smaller. I'm like Toblerone. It's like got a little. <laughs> 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 God damn it. <laughs> I don't like it. This is such an idiot. This is such a stupid conversation. <laughs> you don't even like him anyway. I know. Order it. Order it. <laughs> Can't stand it. <laughs> I just like the, the little, little bits. It's like two. It's the like little t- nukes. Yeah, it gets stuck the everywhere. Little noogie nugs. Little, 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 little toffee bits or whatever right. it is. Order placed. And hazelnuts. How much? Ooh. Curious. Uh, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, all right. We should, uh, we should wrap this up. Here's a couple things I don't want to hear again in my life. I don't want to hear. We were talking about pilots earlier. I don't like what, when pilots movie? say there's weather. I think I've said this before, but pilots always say it every, every fucking time you're on a plane. They're like, "Hey, we're going to be a little bit late coming into Austin because there's some weather in the area." It's like there's weather all the time. Like weather, weather is like it's like a thing. It's just like there's bad weather and there's good weather or there's clear weather. But to just say there's weather, just it drives me fucking. How's that nuts. different to saying there's traffic? There's always traffic. There's always road traffic. No. What? No, traffic is a thing. Yeah, there's always traffic. Not at night. No. That, you can get in a place no, where there's no traffic. You can't get in a place traffic. where there's no weather outside. There's that's always not, weather. Unless there's, unless desert. you are the only car on the road. There was no traffic going to Taylor Swift because they cleared it out for the fucking guy who was going to jump. There's no traffic on that road. But there was traffic before it. There's it, no weather of note. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at a, a tweet. Okay. I was wondering. <laughs> Good for you guys at. over there. I'm watching this podcast stone, and all this Toblerone talk is making me really <laughs> hungry. Go order the big one, dude. It's only 110 bucks. No, what you want to do Tip is the you order 20 bucks. the little ones, the little packet, where it has all the white chocolate one and the dark chocolate one, and all the little ones. The little smidgy, like little, little smidgy, smidgy ones. You just dollar basically a little strip of three, and just bung them all in at once. Man, no, uh, I, I I do like Cadbury stuff because I I have come to your way of thinking that our chocolate tastes like vomit, and it's, Cadbury. You know is why great. it is though? It's because chocolate melts and it's hot here. So they have to put like vomit and earwax into the mixture, <laughs> and it tastes like that to preserve it in these temps. But Cadbury's chocolate is melty in this temperature, but it's lush. He's right. They they, they put a chemical yeah. that's found in vomit into chocolate in the United States. Is that not true? That's not true. That is totally true. Are you serious? Yeah, that that is entirely oh, true. I just said vomit because it tastes like no, vomit. no. There it's is actually there is like a chemical that, that chemically is, vomit. Yeah, well, they, there's they a lot of chemicals in vomit. I'm, I'm right. by the way, if you were, if you're foreign, you have it in the U.S. I'm just referring about. I'm referring to Hershey's. Hershey's milk chocolate specifically tastes like toss. Get the Hershey's special dark. That's really good. Get the Hershey's. I'm not cookies eating and Hershey's cream. anything. Hmm? Hershey's cookies and cream. It is. Uh, well, they don't Hershey's own cabinet. Polyglycerol, polysinoleate. An emulsifier is used to replace cocoa butter. It's made from castor beans. So not vomit. Beans. Castor beans. All right. I don't want to read anymore. I don't want to read that people say their faith in humanity is restored. I'm getting sick of that statement when yeah. people say that shit. Because they haven't lost faith? Well, because it's always like, always it's faith. always over something stupid, like, not something stupid, but like somebody like rescued a puppy or well, adopted it? a, uh, somebody adopted a puppy that was like at the, at the pound. It's like, oh, my faith in humanity is restored. Well, that's like saying, you don't have to say that was the best day ever. Yeah. yeah well, it's like, I mean, really, it's like everything that's like, whatever took away your faith in humanity, the Holocaust, the Syrian refugee crisis, it's like, oh, that guy gave the other guy a shirt. It's like, that's, that's what it took to get your faith in humanity back. Sometimes you need, Razor to, see, thin you like need that. to see a good deed to then go out and do a good deed. Yeah, but the good deed is like, you know, the, the guy yeah, delivered my pizza dumb. at 159 a.m. <laughs> it's like, my faith <laughs> in humanity is restored. Last thing I, last thing I said, I don't want to read anymore, and this is very relevant to this point in time. I don't like when people say that you can, that somebody won something you can't win. And it always comes up at Halloween, like so-and-so won Halloween. This is this oh. kid won Halloween. Yeah. Or whatever. I just, something about that fucking drives me Coming crazy. Coming from the guy who started a show where every week someone wins science. That's true. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's, but that's said in tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, sure. 
But I'm yeah. sure it's tongue in cheek so when you win Halloween. You don't. Yeah. You, you, do you think other people aren't tongue in cheek when they say they win Halloween? I don't know. I think they're if, different than me, so I don't. I don't here, like it. Here's a question for the ask, answered questions at the end. When people say it's the best day ever, it's the best day. Ever. Can you don't qualify tell the best day ever? Yeah. What is like the what, best day ever between the start of recorded time and today? Which day was the best? Maybe. Probably for the day where the global Earth as a whole. Oh, I, just for Earth, not for the universe. I did read Christmas. about a day in New York. <laughs> Where there was no violent crimes reported, and it was like the only time in the right, last. Right, that's only that could, someone years. could have been bombed in Iraq that day. So it might not be the best day. It's a, it's a, it's a global world. Like, which Christmas. day was just supreme all round? <laughs> <Christmas. laughs> Thanks for catching that. All right, well we got to wrap this up. So I want to let everyone know. Uh, well, first I want to thank everyone for watching this episode of the podcast, and let everyone know that they can stay tuned for the Try Hard podcast on Game Attack, and uh, they can check that out. They're about to start streaming right after we're done here. Pete the, Burns the died today. Mo- there's somebody wants to know the two movies that I saw. The two movies that I saw that I liked were Demolition with Jake Gyllenhaal and Sing Street, which Demolition is an Irish man film. With, uh, Not Demolition Man. Wesley Snipes. It's called so Demolition. Sounds pretty good. Good movie. It's good. Bye, everybody. Oh, Andy. Three, uh, oh, show. I thought I heard him. Three C show. <laughs> All right. A reflex. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, everybody. Next week. Bye.